So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> Sponsor of the week is Ferrari. Go fucking buy one. Ferrari, give us one. They're cool. And they're really fast. And there's a Ferrari theme park. What other car company does that? Nobody. Hi, Kyle. Our guest today is Rudy Bustamante. Hello. My friend and companion in crime. I'm happy to be here today. How are you? Yeah, a little. <sighs> All right. How's it going, man? Did I get started so far? All right. Well... Is that how we're doing this it? Is weird. Is, is, it's fuck Alec Day? Is that how we're doing it? No, it's not <laughs> fuck Alec Day. Come on. What you, it's the beginning of the podcast. You want to start over? No, this is how it should be. I like it. No, we definitely should have fuck ups. People should definitely see these. Goddamn right. Okay, fuck it. Back to our conversation last night. Rudy, why don't you believe in the singularity? No, I don't believe in it. I just don't want to know what people know. Why? Because if they want to tell me something, then that's good. They choose to let me in. But it's evolution, man. It is evolution. And when the time when the, the time of evolution comes and it gets there, great. But right now, I don't want to know. I don't <laughs> want to know. Why are you scared? It's creepy. All right, let's say. All right, let's just say I'm hanging out at a bar and you walk in and you're like a crazy fucking pedophile. And right. then you look at me, we lock eyes, and I'm like, and I see all these crazy fucking nasty things you've done. Now I'm like, I don't, I don't want to see that shit. And a part of me is like, should I break this bottle and stab this motherfucker? Should I end him? It's like kind of weird. I think we have two different views on the singularity. Yeah, we probably do. They're like You're probably seeing the really awesome side of it. No, I'm thinking about going into the internet. We're not having bodies anymore. Oh. And just being a mind and the ether. Okay. Wow, that's, wow. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Explain that. <laughs> Well, isn't that what the singularity is? Um, Kyle might know more information on it, but to my understanding, it's it's evolution past the human form. So all you are is a series of codes and information, like pretty much in the in internet is how it's been described to me. I always right. thought of it as as the point that we can't see past. You like, and and that doesn't mean that it it'll will be in the internet or like will be non humans. It doesn't necessarily mean that. I I think it just means that like cave people couldn't. Um, they couldn't even picture Shakespeare. You know what I mean? They they didn't even have language. They talked in grunts. They they couldn't see past that. That would be too crazy. So we're at a point now where we can't see past well, the, physical. The singularity point, I think, to me, just means a future that um that we can't we couldn't even foresee. Like we can't it, we couldn't imagine that craziness. That much of a, a future insanity, you know what I mean? And and that doesn't mean that we're not people. It just means something changes that's so dramatic. You think it's the mind that it is? changes. It it it's changes our whole perception of who we are. What was that the twenty? Was it twenty twelve? Was that the mind calendar thing? People were freaking out about. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the start. Everything resets. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Al. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what that's what uh, McKenna thought. McKenna, McKenna. <laughs> yeah, two, so far, singularity's yeah, been great. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. See, uh, see, it's weird because like, you're like, oh, everything's like codes and numbers. Like, I don't you know. Some people see things like that. Some people are very numerical. Some people are not. So, part of me is like, I don't see things like that. So, it's weird. N not that, it, not in a bad way. It's just, I just don't understand it yet. Yeah. yeah, I think like that's a point, too. right? I'm just making I just shit don't up. Like nobody should be able no to understand, understand it for that. it to yeah. for it to be the singularity. That means that it's ununderstandable. Yeah. You know, like the, um, I think a really shitty version of that was that movie that came out. Uh, what was it called again? We saw it. I don't remember the name. Transcendence. Transcendence. Johnny, did you see that movie? Mm -mm. It was basically like Johnny Depp was the internet. Oh, he put nanobots in people and became their minds. It was like the, I think the worst form of maybe what that could potentially be. 
It's also kind of a scary movie. Fucking Johnny Depp. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Alex's a big fan of the internet. He loves it. I like it too, but nowadays I'm, I'm like slowly getting off of it. Not off of it. I'm just like... Man, you deleted all the apps on your phone recently. Yeah. You have like two apps. I just... You know what? I just... He's on this like anti-social network kick right now. No, I'm just... I, I waste too much time. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes I can sit there and just burn two hours doing nothing. It's like, what the hell did I just do? Nothing. <laughs> Facebook. You know? like, and remember, Instagram. Yeah, like remember yesterday we were talking about you have the whole galaxy in your hand yeah. you know in your pocket you have all the information and what do you do with it look up tits fucking nothing you know what do you do on it fucking <laughs> look up babies bullshit you know and then two hours pass you're like Whoa, fuck it who cares yeah and i mean and you've taken all the time and now you're like you're finishing your book and stuff like yeah. you're actually been going through a grinder lately yeah it's Dude, weird um, rudy's like, doing our artwork uh for our show rudy's an illustrator yeah i'm pretty excited yeah. actually your book looks fucking sick. Have you seen this? Have you seen any of his work? Yeah. Like it's like the sweet like robots and yeah. weird goblin shit. I just realized that Titan on the wall was uh, was his drawing. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I noticed yeah. that when I was I was training my client the other day because yeah. uh, he, he showed me a few of his of his sketches and uh, they they're just so they were so dramatic they're they're so so awesome but you could tell it was the same style you know. I could. I don't know yeah. shit about drawing, but I could tell. Like, <laughs> yeah. I saw a few of Rudy's sketches, and yeah. I was like, "Rudy drew that." Yeah, he drew um, where we worked. Is like this big. T it's literally the gym. We called Titan, and like he drew Wally pretty much. He drew our boss, this big giant dude with a giant fucking bat, a sword, which he has in the office. He has yeah. he got the sword made <laughs> from his drawing. He has it hanging on the wall. It's so. It's like bigger than me almost. Yeah, fucking sick. Cool. But it's like it's one of those things. Like it's like a switch. I'll be hot for like three months, and then it's like. Won't even lift a pencil for like four months. And there was like certain days I don't sleep. Remember that, Alec? I'm like, Alec. Oh, yeah. We I'm have space chase nights. Yeah. We have space chase. And I'll just be, I'll draw all night. And before you know it, I'll check it. And I'm like, oh, I got a client in an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. And then like both my eyes are bloodshot, like bleeding. <laughs> like, like you're a crackhead. Yeah. And my clients are like, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, fucking all right, man. Like, and it's weird <laughs> because the more I create, like it feeds you yeah, to the dude. point where. You're like, I need to finish this session now. Why? Because yeah. I got to get downstairs and do this, and I got to go outside and do that. And before I know it, you're like, I haven't slept in two days. Do you think that's getting in the zone? Do you think that's what that is for you? Like, your zone is that weird high of drawing? Like, your creativity zone? Whatever that may be. Yeah. Because I'm not an artist, so no, I have no, no idea what it's like to no, get but into it's like, that. It's almost like you, you, you see all of it. Mm. You see all of it. What do you mean? Like, the color spectrum oh, no, or I'm what's in your head? Like, Right now, I'm just talking about like line. Like you see it all. Like you, you understand. Like okay, that's a good line. That's a bad line. That's a feminine line. That you know, that, that's bullshit. Feminine like, line. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of different kind of lines. But Was certain, like certain lines, you don't even erase. You just go over them, and eventually, you go over them so many times and so thick and thin that some lines they just disappear. Does that make it better? Oh yeah. Like some of the sketches you like when you, that you've seen. Yeah. There's like maybe you'll see like two lines out of the whole thing, but there's like. Maybe twenty lines under that thing, Fuck, serious? but you don't see it. You're like you don't see it because your line picks out your eye picks out the the most attractive line. So you design your drawings in layers. Yeah. So you know the bottom layer is going to create the top layer that people so will all see. If you is go, that how it works? For yeah. You? If you go see that painting of Wally's right. on the wall, if you look really close, there's so many other underlines under that, but you won't see them because you Whoa. your line your eye picks out the line it likes. Whoa. It's almost like seeing a group of girls, right? Yeah. There's two really hot ones, <laughs> and there's like. Seven it's the, it's the hot, it's middle the hot of the road. Thing. Right away, your eye goes where to the hot ones, and the other ones, it's like, oh, they, oh, they were there. You don't even know what the hell they were wearing, awesome. but you see the two ones that you like. You're like, oh, I like that line. I like this line. I like that. And the other ones, they just fill in the whole thing. It gives it like body. When you went to that art school, did they teach you how to draw like that? So they did draw what the eye will pick up. Is no, that what was a thing? But they, it's, I, you know, you really don't learn much in art school. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You really don't. <laughs> But they explain to you what you're seeing. That's the good thing. Because sometimes you're like, why do I see that? So why do I you see figure this? that out. So they, no, they, they kind of explain to you, like, this is what you're seeing. This is what you're doing. The teachers are like, Man, how do you explain art? How do you tell somebody, hey, you know, I mean, you can learn some techniques, but either you got it or you don't. Know. Like, some people can lift, right? Some people, you could coach the shit out of them. They just can't lift. You could cue the hell out of them. Yeah. They just can't lift. If some people are just, What's that? Pick it up. Got it. Done. You're like, what the fuck? Holy shit. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. It's like a switch. Some people can switch it on. Some people cannot. 
It's fucking weird. Do you ever use substance when drawing? Uh, only, only alcohol. Yeah. yeah. So how does that make your drawings different? Is it better? You it think? Doesn't. But I did, I did a couple of years of animation. All animators drink a lot. <laughs> like fuck, you, you pretty much like sewn to a table for like twelve hours, and you're doing this, then another drawing of that, then this, then that, then this, and mm-hmm. that. Thirty seconds will probably run you maybe like a week and a half of it. Yeah. So like a two minute. I remember when when I first started, they were like, "All right, two minutes. We need two minutes of animation." I'm like, two minutes, no fucking problem." Then you find out, oh, we're gonna be working the whole semester on two minutes. I'm like, "Oh shit, <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Like that's it. You're done. You're like you're not hanging out with anyone. It's you, a six pack, and like a handle, and that is it. Fucked up. <laughs> that is it's over. Why does it take so long? You'd think that'd be a thing. It's not. But, you know, it, it takes a long time because, again, it's, like, so many, like, little steps. So, of course, now in the U.S., we don't do that shit anymore. Like, when you watch Family Guy, like, you know, they just do the image, you know, they do the... They image do the, boards? They, they just do the key, for like, well, almost like the, the key poses. They'll do this, like, you know, like a real dramatic pose. You know, this guy picking up a cup and then walking out of the room. And the rest of it, they send that to, like, you know, send it to Asia. And they're like... We export oh, yeah. animation jobs? They, they export what? everything, yeah. Uh, fucking know that. Oh, yeah. Why? Because I guess it's just like mundane work. Oh, it's cheap. Or is it, oh, that's so <laughs> really cheap. I don't fucking know that. Over there, they, they work, they'll work for like they'll work all day long. They don't care. Uh, yeah. Weird. If you have to do that here, you have to pay a pretty penny. It's like Disney sold all those things back then. The 2D studios, all the shits are gone. Uh, I don't know shit about art. That's fucking weird. Yeah. It's all business. Everything. At one point, you know, I did it. I did it a lot. I did not even get to be at like a, a high level of it, and I was already like, "I'm sick of this shit. I can't do this. Like, I can't. I cannot." And now, so it's weird because in work, when I come across certain clients who are like, you know, they sit all day and they're like, "I can't look at another screen again. I'm gonna blow my brains out." And it's like I understand. I'm like, "Oh my god, you're not meant to do that. You're not meant to sit there for that long." Yeah. And do that, you know? It's like, well, it's just bad. Yeah, we're literally not designed for that, right? No. Like, biologically, at no point. In the very short time that we've been here, have we sat in front of a really lit um, prompt of some sort, right? Never. And we've always been moving. We've been designed to hunt. So intense moments of focus, and then stop. And intense moments of focus, explosion, stop. So what was it, uh, What was it, Kyle? You remember it better. What was it, the cosmos that said humans have been here for, what, like, five hours or some shit? In the no, grand no scheme? it's like five minutes. Five minutes <laughs> on, the, on the grand scheme of things? Yeah. Right? If, so If the, uh, the whole universe was a year, mm. it, humans were around for, like... It's it's like two minutes. It's, it's not yeah, nothing. five. Right. Nothing. It's, We're nothing. We're so the, so know. what? Hun- the hundred years maybe that we've had uh, prompts in front of us or, or monitors rather. At no point was our body made to fucking sit down sedentary and get all fucking tilted forward and stare and have our coin ears explode. Just fucking do like I have. Um, I went to an eye doctor not too long ago and they said that I'm I have early onset glaucoma, and it's because of monitors. Like, Fuck. my whole life I spent, like, I've never had a computer. And he's like, yeah, you're going to have glaucoma by the time, like, like 45. <laughs> Better step up your weed game, son. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to get high a lot. Yeah. yeah dude, but, gonna, yeah, it's shitty. You're going to be, like, daredevil, man. But, right, but, like, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, totally. Just be a <laughs> jacked blind guy in the gym. <laughs> it's only doing bench. I'm not squatting blind. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> so I would be blind, I would be jacked. Fuck this. Be blind and jacked. That's my move. But, it's really, really, you know, it's really true. At one point, like... You know, you, like, what's more important? I remember there was one professor that told me, I was like, oh, you know, you know how, how did your art career go? And he's like, oh, I just got back into it now. I was like, huh? oh, I was like, I was like, what did you do for, you know, the time you took off? And he told me, he was like, he's like, I love animation. I love storytelling. But at one point he goes, I didn't want to sit and draw the stories and live the life I wanted to live through animation. He's like, I'd rather just do that in real life. Then he took off like ten years and went traveling, and like you know he just did all sorts of different jobs. Then he came back, started doing some animation work and teaching work. But when he said that, I was like, oh shit! How many animators do that? How many artists do that? Where they they can't you know they can't do these things in real life, but you see their work. It's like another world. They make their own world in their medium. You ever done that? Huh? Sometimes, Plan doing that? Oh yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes I'll get lost for like like a couple of weeks and be like, oh shit, real world, you know like. Get back into this. Also writing stories, and I'm like, where the fuck did I make this shit up from? I'm like, what the fuck? You know? Do you plan on doing that, though, for the finish your book? Like, you can go somewhere crazy? Like oh, New no, Zealand well, once I finish that thing, I'm probably never going to write again. Yeah. I, I swear to you, I'm probably never <laughs> yeah. going to write again. And it happens. Why? It's just know. taking forever. 
No, it just that happens. Like at one point, I was into sculpting. I made this fucking awesome yeah. thing. Once I finished it, I was like, "This is the greatest thing I've ever made." Never sculpted. That thing in your room. Yeah, never sculpted. Never sick. Sculpt, never sculpted again. I was like, "I'm done with this." Like this crazy figure, just like leaning forward. Like this has like a crazy wolf next to him. It's made of clay. It's the, one of the coolest fucking things ever. I'm yeah. surprised you didn't stay with sculpting. Yeah. Shit was dope. It's like okay. Did you else? get to do that with your hands, or do would you have to use tools? I have no idea. Tools, sculpt. your hands, and stuff. Then when you finish, they're like, okay, fire it up. I'm like, oh, what does that mean? They're like, you got to, like, bake it. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, oh, it, it, it can explode. I'm like, oh, fuck you. So, like, <laughs> I spent three oh, months. Oh, was that? You spent eight years on yeah, that thing? Fuck it could yeah. explode. Yeah. But, so, but that's the whole thing, I feel like, as an artist. You know, at least I don't like saying, oh, I'm an artist. But in trying to be creative, you got to find, like, a yin and a yang. Like, certain artists were really cool by that. Like, there was an artist. Uh, I, he's, like, one of my favorites, uh, Frank Frazetta. This guy was from Brooklyn. He was, um, from a young age, he was discovered as, like, this child prodigy. He was, like, this amazing, like, he, the way he used his colors and his line. He, he, he was, like, an old, like, Renaissance master. So they were like, oh, he's doing this beautiful work. Oh, my God. And his, his professor was like, we're going to send him to this, to this place in Italy. You know, he's going to work with all these classically trained professors. His, 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 uh, his professor ended up passing away. So he couldn't, you know, they, they couldn't raise the money and send him over there. So he ended up staying in New York. And in that time in New York, there was a lot of, like, sci-fi comic companies coming out. Like, all of it. There was in the West Coast. It was all in New York. So picture this classically, you know, trained, you know, young man now doing Conan posters. Now, he, you see, like, this really crazy, like, medieval, like, you know, Conan like, with chains and all those, like, slutty chicks on him. Like, at one point, this guy's supposed to be doing, like, renaissance work. Now he's just doing, like, heavy he said, metal. Fuck it, he's doing Carmex he's now? He's doing, like, heavy metal, like, aggressive stuff. Um, I, When he passed away a couple of years ago, like, the, I think somebody from Metallica bought all his stuff for a couple of million dollars. Like, he's got an awesome, awesome museum. What was his name? Frank Frazetta. He's in a, I think he's in a book that I have of, uh, of concert posters. Yeah, for Christmas. nice. So, some of his stuff is like dragons. It's like in the 80s? You know, like, like 60s, 70s. Like his, and, and at one point he, uh, he's like a, he was a big man's man. So you'll see pictures of him like smoking cigarettes <laughs> outside, chopping a fucking tree and stuff, like throwing axes at walls. Bearded? Yeah, like he's, you know, sometimes course, course. he had a beard stuff, so he was clean. He kind of looked a little bit like, like Clint Eastwood a little bit, you know, when he was younger. He was, he was like a fucking cool dude, you know? Bad motherfucker. Yeah, but he like, he was like, he, he would do art, but go outside and be like, all right, I'm gonna go fucking eat a bear. do stuff, you know? <laughs> and, eat it, a bear. and it was like, you know, but that was the time when men, you know, were like, what are you doing? I got nothing to do. I'm gonna go work on this engine, take it apart, you know? I was like, what the fuck? Like, you know, there was like a certain level of like, stay busy, you know, stay rounded. And it was pretty cool. And at one point, I, he ended up getting a stroke and he couldn't use the, his, the use of his right hand. And his strong hand, I'm assuming. Yeah, and everyone's like, oh, fuck, he's fucked. And you know what he did? He taught himself how to do everything with the left hand. And then he did a whole series of, like, left-handed, like, these, like, fucking great, like, battle, like, cats and tigers and shit. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Awesome. <laughs> like, you know, some people came and tied their fucking shoes, you know, with their with fucking both, with hands. both hands. And this guy's like, I'm going to teach myself how to <laughs> I can't. fucking paint with my left. And it's like, what the fuck are we not doing? You know, and it's uh, just some people could skills, man. focus, man. I think it's important to develop skills. Yeah, skills building is important, man. But, you know, that guy, I'm like, that, that that's an artist to me. Yeah. You know, that's an artist. Like you pull him outside of the studio he can still be creative in other ways and that's like wow is that why you and mel do like those knife classes each week and shit like that? you gotta they'll do something once, knife classes once a week they have this crazy we don't know what the fuck race he is guy he could be he could literally be any race he's so ambiguous this guy comes in almost unannounced like we can never like he just he's just there we almost never see him come up the stairs. He's just always there waiting to start class. He wears this really cool hat and his name is jim right he just floats in he just floats. and he floats out and he's a fucking ninja. I'm telling you, he's right like 13 knives on him at all times. Like crab my god, like type shit. The, like there's no, like when he walks in, there's no waves. You can't like if, 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 if the whole room was if the whole room was like covered in water, you wouldn't feel his wave. He it's dances just, on the water. The guy just walks in, and just like that, when it's all done, you're like you turn around and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like commissioner. Yeah. I feel like commissioner Gordon. We're like talking to Batman. He's just Batman. Gone. You're like, Dude, oh my god. He teaches like five trainers at Titan how to knife fight and he fucks them up. He like, these trainers were in good shape, like football playing <laughs> trainers. This guy's in his 50s, maybe 60s. Yeah. And he'll put them in arm bars and shit and just throw them. He'll be like, oh no, you did that wrong. You slightly want to do this. And fucking Jonathan will go throw <laughs> and, and Jonathan's like 190 pounds, six foot two black man who plays football. Like, it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. This team's you know, scary. And, like, <laughs> it's again, skills building, you mm -hmm. know? Like, what skills can you take? into you know your later years and this guy's skills are out of control man like it's a badass yeah jim's yeah I that even his real name 
I don't even know. I don't know. And if you let him, he goes on tangents about communism. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like, he hates communism. Like, he's super pro-American, like, old school. It's like, you're fucking Russians, and they're fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, what? it's not even what we're doing, Jim. It's so awesome. So awesome. <laughs> please, red. please get that guy in here. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Man. I feel like he'll kill us by the end of the conversation. Oh, yeah. Just can't leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is great. But you know, like like you said, with, like, with me and Mel, like that's a goal. Like I think every year somebody you should pick a goal and be like, I don't know shit about this. I need to get into that. Yeah. You know? And it's like I'm, I'm a little like an idiot doing this. All right, let's go for it. You know, I'm doing yeah, that. Like this leading year. a podcast. You know? What are you doing? Uh, woodworking. Oh shit! Where are you doing that? At? Well, when I move, I'm gonna have two barns. I'm gonna have access to, and I'm gonna build a wood shop. Fuck! You're yeah. just gonna build the shop. Yeah, I got. I already got a couple tools lined up. Yeah, like a table hammer. saw, miter saw. <laughs> Some other saws, hammers, screwdrivers. So much I know. You got a hammer? You got you good yeah. to go? You got I'm the hammer? Go. I mean, you really, <laughs> there's like two main tools you need if you want to do like any woodwork, and that's a table saw, drills, and and, and a miter saw. So. What are you going to build there, man? you have any ideas yet? Uh, chairs, man. I also House. do carving, too. I started carving, like relief carving with like chisels and shit. Nice. So I'm going to, um, I want to do like lawn, like Adirondack chairs and shit like that. You know, fun stuff. Nice. But, Where are you but moving furniture. To? Where are you moving to? Like near Lake Ontario. What? Whoa. Yeah. So you guys are gonna you guys are gonna come up. Is that what we're doing? I have we're I'm gonna have I'm gonna have twelve acres. Okay. So you guys can like do shrooms. So allegedly. I, allegedly. Allegedly. You can allegedly do shrooms, do shrooms and <laughs> walk my land. And then, like, we can hang out. I like how you put that walk my land. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you were Moses. Dude, We're welcome not to walk the promised land. land. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a bow and arrow up there and just hunt Oh, there won't be hunting on, on the land. land. What? I can't kill a rabbit on your land? No, Sorry, bro. No, ha- no hunting on, on our land. <sighs> no animal murder. Fine. No animal murder. What if It'll we be... eat it, though? What's that? What if we let you eat it? No. Okay. No fair. killing on our land. Fair enough. Like, oh, we're at that. Yeah. Okay. What if, all right. No, <laughs> I thought about it because I'm gonna invite you guys up, but you knocked me with a hunt, and so okay. I was kind of sad That's about fine. taking that away from you. That's yeah. okay. Was this your girlfriend? We can do. We can do that. Was that? Was this places? your girlfriend's rule? No, it's just the way my family is. Yeah. No, it's me too. My land. I, awesome. Even though I give you much Dude, respect we for haven't, hunting, we with haven't bows and sold arrows. you on the hunting, uh, the hunting endeavor yet. We, we haven't, haven't sold you on no, the idea. You get, you get a lot of respect for the whole bow and arrow thing because I really respect that as opposed to using a gun. But I just hunting is just really not for me. Even Why? if it saves the lives yeah. of other animals, we're saving Even cows. Even if it's good for the econ, right. like the, the natural cow. ecosystem. I, I hold on. <laughs> let's let's be clear. I'm not against you hunting. I am just not hunting for myself. But <laughs> I hunting is just not for me. I totally believe that hunting needs to happen. It's just a natural. Would you rather me lock up cows and? Yeah. <laughs> We can make them slaves. I'm gonna take them and then just I don't them. have a problem with you guys hunting. Slowly slit their throat and, and just pull them apart. I'm gonna shoot steroids in its asshole. Put them. I don't have a problem with you guys take, hunting. Put them in a live. I encourage you to hunt, especially with the bow and arrow. Go hunt. Go fuck it. Go. Get those deer. They 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 they're, they're, there's too much of them anyway. You're right. <laughs> it's just not for me. I'm gonna go to a slaughterhouse and be like, Whatever. I want that cow. You know what, run. I'm gonna you know what we should do instead, Kyle? I want the very <laughs> unhappy cow. Give me, give me, Kyle, you know what we should do? Fuck give hunting. Me, let's just make a factory cow. farm, Kyle. Let's get into mm, that. Let's make right. factory farms. Let's oh move in. God. That's the move. Let's move in right next to Angelo and build a factory farm. Yeah, that's the move. And you know it's a it's a farm that Look only has up. baby cows. Yeah, we don't let them get big. We're and we break it. their fucking legs so they can't stand and make veal. We're gonna is that do, what not veal? What's it called? <laughs> we're new Whatever. veal. Is it? Foie gras. Foie gras. There we go. Uh, baby baby lamb. Human lamb is very good. Stuff Human. I think we'll have to check with the laws, but you I gotta do it to bison. Legal. I just had a I had a bison steak recently. You're gonna eat oh, our my. food, but you won't kill it. That's what I said. I, I'm not against the hunting. I'm just not going to do it myself. That's why I have you guys. <laughs> I like it. Super, I like where his head's at. I think, he's, I think he's on point. Imagine there's a supermarket where you go there and everything's alive and it's like, <laughs> and it's like, all right, and you bludgeon no, it no, to no, death. But, it, but check this out. They're like, we could kill it for you. It costs X, Y, and Z. Well, or you could go to the wall, rent something. And it'll cost it'll cost you a little less X Y and Z, or you can bring your own shit, okay? And it's just like Hunger Games. Go get that fucking chicken, and it'll cost you like fucking bottom, you know? It's it's like eight dollars, yeah, like five bucks. We're gonna get chickens, and it's like that should be awesome. People coming that'd be fucking and stuff. sick, dude. Like, what are you doing? I'm fucking you hunting, can, making you breakfast. You gotta like rent a mace and just fucking go in there and just fucking 
fuck a bird up. When I was in Texas, I went to a barbecue spot that was, that was a cattle exchange. It was basically like that. A Cadillac? Like a- yeah, like the whole back, like acres worth of land was devoted to auctioning cattle. Oh, and the wow. barbecue was in the front. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the guys back there were making their way up. Dude, front. bam! And just fucking, that's so awesome. Fresh meat. Oh it was called, literally, the name of the place was called the Cattle Exchange. <laughs> Oh, and they have those guys so who are like, do I have 25, do I have 25, 3,500, 3,500, like, <laughs> they have those guys do it in the big 10-gallon hats, like, directing that's people. Per- was this in Texas? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Texas when I went. Texas. See, this is, that's where you do your store, Texas. Dude, They'll do it. Texas, you yeah. totally rent mazes in Texas and fuck up a cow. <laughs> that's totally a thing that could happen. Everybody yelling at you, Alec, we're gonna eat that thing. Yeah, yeah. What the right. fuck? <laughs> well, that's the move. What are you drinking, Alec? Um... My green drink. Green is that? Does it have the brain power stuff in it? No, I know I the brain power. Uh, no, I took it after. But this is spinach, walnuts, um, banana. Spinach, walnuts, and, it sounds and like water. A, sounds like you're drinking drinking pesto. Spinach and walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's it's the the whole it's the it's the Rogan recipe. The Hulk jizz, he calls it. The the, the what? Hulk jizz. <laughs> this is what he calls it. His is better though. His is more extreme. His is like all kale. A little more pungent. I'm a, I'm a pussy. <laughs> I'm a weak bitch. I went for the weaker bitch option. Spinach Kale's smash. gross. Kyle does kale. Kyle's, Kyle's is the full, the full on crazy shake. I got like 13 ingredients, man. Yeah, I have like three. Kyle, does it sound better in your headphones now? I got, this sounds awesome. All right. Yeah. You, you trust this me is, now? I am so happy now. Trust me now. I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he was, you were I was like, sitting there. I'm like, I, this I is turned around work. and you were like, like this is that why you're so happy in the beginning? You're like, this is this is fucking work. shit. We have to cancel this episode. <laughs> we're, at, uh, we're just wasting time. <laughs> and just know that everything you like, heard. I was just like, doll- I, I, I was thinking about like pulling out money and just like throwing it <laughs> at Angela's <laughs> face. Thanks, man. Here we go. So you guys understand that I have some skills and I'll I'll give you what you asked for. I trust you, man. I trust you. I never not trust you, Moses. But it was the first time that that it sounded like that. That's right, why I was because nervous. I, the thing was that I literally just right. I needed more capital to buy my house, right. and I, I got rid of some of my tools, <laughs> yeah. which I used on your show. So I had to yeah. reinvent them with other things, and, which I can do. Yeah, he's doing different. skills. <laughs> See, I just needed a little time. Is that the way to go? Skills, like lots of skills, or yeah. really, 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 really good at one skill. Mm. Well, if you're really, really, really good at one skill, people are going to come looking for you to learn from you eventually. Mm. Eventually, you're going to start teaching. I if you're agree. good at a lot of skills, I guess you can get by when the shit hits the fan, or you could just, you know, wow people, like, oh, I know a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But sometimes some skills, like, what the fuck you need to know that for, man? It's I like, feel like if you're you really know? great at one skill, that one skill isn't actually just one skill. You know, because usually when people talk about a skill, like a master carver of wood, he's not just skilled... At carving wood, he's skilled at many things that involve wood, like how to choose wood. The process of making good wood. So when you go to learn yeah. from somebody, there's not you're not just gonna learn, you know, just here's how you carve a piece of wood. It's it's like this is why this all works. So like you you know many things about the one trait. What's the, where's that saying from Kyle? It's a uh, master one thing and know everything broadly. Who's that? Is that Mishu Shash of Mashaki? The win five God. rings guy. I can see you've done your murder. research. Yeah. <laughs> I can see you've It's a really old death. Japanese name. Fuck you guys. It's fucking old. I'm pretty sure his name was Brave Fencer Musashi. No, it's not. It's like, no. You know it. No. All right, you Google it, whatever. Point is, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know one thing really well, and you evolve all the steps in the process to make right. that one thing. Right. Just like with like this stuff, you know, oh. I feel like I've mastered recording. Well, I never really master it, but there's a lot of shit that I had to learn to to be able to run all this stuff. Yeah, and and one of the major things was just dealing with people. Period. Because in the end of it, that's kind of what I do the most. Even if this doesn't sound as great, if I can convince you that that this is good, you're, you're be all right. <laughs> yeah. Or I did it. Yeah. yeah, too much ADD for that. J- for one Jedi thing, mind tricks. Oh, I, yeah. I had Kevin come in. We're going to do his his project. Kevin Swiss? Yeah. He's going to do his little rap yeah. thing? That's yeah. awesome. It's just funny because I have him in my... When I talked to him over the phone after you guys gave him my contact info, I thought he said his name was Kyle. No. <laughs> right? So I'm like, why? Kyle must have got a new number. So I put in, I put his name in my phone as Kyle for, for podcast. 
So we set up a meeting for seven o'clock, and I thought you guys were both coming in. Uh, so oh, I had a no. I had a recording session. I was recording guitars, and I asked the guys, "Hey, you guys, mind if I just do this podcast quick? You know, my my boys are gonna come through. We'll hang out for two hours, and then we'll go back and record." And they were like, "Yeah, let's, let's that's cool." And I was like, "Maybe they might even want you to to sit around." And uh, <laughs> I thought, you know, Sucks. like. The, 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 the text it just says kyle kyle like oh. i'm not in my phone and i'm like oh okay this is like and he's asking he, he's asking me weird questions i'm like why is kyle asking me this kyle really <laughs> high right now <laughs> forget where we are so like kyle show, <laughs> kyle's at the where door the i open the studio the, yeah kyle's kyle, not black <laughs> kyle texts me I, I i'm at the door and like i go to the door and it's kevin i'm like Oh shit! Fuck you, oh, Kevin. That, yeah, that's what I'd all meant. And I was really looking forward to doing the podcast. Ah, I was like, "That's Fuck. right." <laughs> oh, Angela, that's awesome. That's all how right. you know you've been smoking too much weed. Yeah, like no. for me, that's how I know. Yeah, like when I start doing stuff like that. Yeah, when you schedule a podcast with Kevin. Well, yeah, you just you get like you get too like lazy minded for everything. Like yeah. you, you know what I mean? You just don't pay attention to detail, mm. which is like the benefit of weed. Like, I mean, that is the benefit of wheat is that we go through li- our lives uh, paying way too close attention to detail and we need a break. Well, you know what it was? I had, a, I had a really the- long day and it was yeah. it was just weird. So I, I was kind of like checking out because I usually smoke weed to pay attention to details. I'm right, the kind of yeah. person. Oh, really? I'm, kinda, yeah, I'm the kind of person to overlook details unless. So I get, you know, when I do this stuff, this is this is where I'm the most detail oriented. You know, otherwise, my girlfriend could choke the shit out of me because of the lack of detail, <laughs> the lack of attention to detail that I place on that, things. Is it the I, I take all my all my detail, power, and focus gets focused on this, and I've I've tried really hard to be able to spread that focus across other things. It's just incredibly difficult for me, and weed helps me with that. Yeah, you don't think sativas help you? Pay attention more, how? No, not things? not in particulars. No, not in like the details. I mean, I I kind of hear what he's saying though, a little bit. Like, wh- if I if I am stretching and I'm high, I like I pay way closer attention to like the details of like the way my shoulder blades move and like mm-hmm. the little tiny muscles. Like, right. I'll pay attention to that sort of stuff. I'll pay attention to like details about myself and about my life that maybe are troubling me that I've been like. Yeah, covering up off. like uh, uh, that sort of thing and that's but what like, i need that's what i need I when it comes to like like let me if i'm high and i take the trash out uh like i won't put a new trash bag back in <laughs> I, you like, if i'm shoe. high and i you know that i run out of toilet paper like i'm not gonna refill the roll Fair you enough. know what i mean like and that's that sort of not paying attention to detail that sort of stuff yeah. that's how that's how and that's that's what i do when i don't smoke the weed yeah <laughs> that's just you in life yeah it's just yeah. you in life oh man completely yeah. opposite <laughs> effects yeah Your it makes me it makes fucked. me care a lot more i, I see i've i've yeah. i've i've you know i've noticed it makes me care it's the paranoia i do all my papers i don't get paranoid high. i just I, I just love life i get paranoid i that's yeah, that's unfortunate to me. No, it's good though. It keeps me out. like when I'm doing papers high, I freak out. So I'm like, oh, I, need to do I don't research. think that's ever good being paranoid. What do you think? You are yeah, crazy, definitely. son. Definitely, like paranoia is good. It feeds my best self. Hard work. work. Yeah, it feeds hard work and creativity. Yeah, well, self it. self work. So yeah, self work. Like what? it it brings out the shit about yourself that you don't want to deal with. Yeah. Like the paranoia, even though usually it's exacerbated and it's like it's it's not necessarily a, a just paranoia or you shouldn't really have to worry about it you probably should start you know what i mean <laughs> like it 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 pointed out something to me the other day and i'm not going to bring it in particular but alec i was talking to alec about it and um and he's like dude like you don't need to worry about that at all but like and and he was right but i should start thinking about being worried about it you know what I mean? Like oh, if yeah, I if I yeah. was if I wasn't high, I'd just sweep it under the rug of my mind and not ever think about it. Like I I I, I need to consider things. You it's know the, what I mean? It's the like potential. consider the yeah. risks of keep going down this path. I guess consider I the guess risk. that's what the weed is doing for me. I mean, I, I consider yeah. things a lot yeah, more. And right. Like, and and when you do it early and you nip it in the bud, it's no big deal. And weed will bring that like to the forefront of your focus real quick. And oh that, yeah, and, I get shit done. Make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get shit done. Yeah. It's interesting. Because like, I dated a couple of girls, a lot of different women who just smoked and some of them smoked and some of them just became like couch potatoes. They would mm-hmm. smoke and just be like... 
you kind of you kind of get back from it yeah. what you put into it like and, you're looking at three people that really kind of i think energize and power their their smoking experience and some of them would smoke and just like start cooking and cleaning and fucking writing papers and right. shit i'm like what the fuck yeah. like, wow so for some people it's like batteries another person it's like yeah. end game and depends <sighs> depends on the strain too i just got True. this new i allegedly got this new strain it's called chocolope <laughs> It's Allegedly. a mix of uh, cantaloupe haze and, and chocolate tie. And as soon as I take, I allegedly take a first puff, <laughs> it, like, I just want to do music. Like, I just, it, I, for some reason, this weed just allegedly programmed me to just, <laughs> I just want to get in front of my keyboard and start banging out beats. Do you think it's certain good. strains carry memories? Like, certain strains of ayahuasca? carry the memories of the area they're in clue about that you think Dude, we're not high enough to be talking about we're not high at all <laughs> right now are you insane <laughs> like what are you doing i was bringing it up it's ten, what time is it it's 11 29 on a fucking wednesday so so what are you negative nancy jesus <laughs> let's not talk about anything i'm fun. sorry listen i'm gonna apologize right off the bat because i think i set the tone kyle's tone for the rest of the podcast yeah. we're not having the sound proper <laughs> So I apologize to the to the two listeners and you guys. No, what I, what, I, what I mean is like you're talking about weed memory right now. Like I, we're not even stoned, bro. I know because we don't have oh, whatever. That is isn't like, that kind uh, of the point though. Like you you get stoned, it should it should yeah, bleed over gotta, into your your you sober think? self. Yeah, maybe. You know. All right. You, you know I mean, what? I'm being. I don't. I'm being I don't want to be sorry. high all I'm sorry, the time. You I'm know? sorry. You know what? I don't. All right. So I'll answer your question, if you don't mind. Go for it. I don't think so. I mean, it, it, it causes a different chemical reaction, just like different types of alcohol, right? Like beer makes you feel a certain way. Sake makes you feel a certain way. Oh. Whiskey makes you feel a certain way. Wine. Moonshine makes you feel a certain way. For sure. They all like do different things to you. It's not that there's like a memory built into moonshine. Like you ever drink moonshine and you're instantly you're like catapulted back to like all those hillbilly farmers up in the hills of West Virginia? Like, nope. No, <laughs> you are. Not yet. You just have a different like chemical reaction to it, right? So is, is that what it is then? Yeah, are you breaking like everything down to chemical it's reactions? It's a different chemical compound, right? It's a different strain. It's a different type. It does a different thing to your brain. Maybe it lets you like tune into a different frequency. Maybe yes. like m makes you look at the world a little bit differently. This frequency and memory but, is two but, different words. But the same whatever thing. it does, it tunes your brain into like something different, a different perception, a different reaction, and that chemical process seems to like do that. So uh, when people like uh, like Amber Lyon, for example, or Duncan Trussell talk about different strains of ayahuasca or psilocybin feeling different you think it's so it's it's just a chemical reaction then is that what you're saying well, no i think it's both i think okay. like like trying to say that that's like a black and white thing is kind of silly like it has to be both like it, the chemical reaction makes you tune into a different thing right. or makes you lo look at the world a different way so yeah. like the two don't have to be separate they don't have to be they yeah don't have to, i was only curious coincide because apparently that one strand makes him want to make music yeah. for whatever reason yeah not other strands but that one that one well maybe uh, some other sour ones. diesel Sour D, to yeah, sour D's but the, the sativa heavy stuff makes me want to do music. But this, okay, as of late, like I've I've been getting sativa stuff, but it hasn't really sparked that. But like this stuff, I just got the beginning of this week, and it's like it's been a bit bothersome because I've been getting into a situation where I'm like comfy with my girl and shit like that. We're chilling. We're gonna watch some TED talks notebook. or something. <laughs> the Notebook, you know, <laughs> whatever. And uh, Notebook's a fucking dope movie. I don't care what anybody. <laughs> But yeah, I, I smoke it and like I immediately want to just get up and get to my my station with all my music stuff and like do stuff. Come I wanted on. to write a theme for your your thing. Yeah, <laughs> but I know you guys already got somebody for that. Do it. Who cares? It's gonna be better. I'll do a submission. We'll, we'll, you can. B we'll bid. Yeah, we have we'll three people. We'll put you guys, we'll put you guys okay. head to head. Yeah. All right. oh Winner God, takes all. Like a playoff. <laughs> Winner gets one hundred dollars. <laughs> really. <laughs> Do we have a hundred dollars to get singles too? I got, singles, a, too, I got a pretty in singles. <laughs> no, not even in those golden coins. Just throw it at them. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> coins? Get it coins. In quarters. I'm bringing it, it back. Like quarters. You the, 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 the dollar guy. coins? Yeah, the gold. That's ones. you. That's what Sacagawea. You do? Yep. All right, we're putting that out there into the dozens of people that will listen to this podcast. Love you, motherfuckers. Sing Whoever wants to come up with a theme theme song, if it's better than Angelo's or Chris Comfort's, I will give you one hundred golden dollars <laughs> we'll mail it to you <laughs> i will not mail it to you, you no. crazy dollars no, you think coins. how expensive that would be to mail right you think it would be expensive? <laughs> <laughs> no if you're if i have to mail it to you i'm sending it through bitcoin or like maybe maybe single no i'm our not listeners, sending it through like, the mail i'm sending it through bitcoin our two listeners are down the block at peak 
Like you can mail that. What? Oh, that's true. Okay. So Kevin. for you, hey Kevin. Hey Kevin. Hey Kevin. Or one listener. Hi Kev. <laughs> uh, that Am means you too. You can wrap yeah. us something nice. Yeah. All Are right? you a musician too? No, but no. I can try. Yeah. Fuck that. And why not? You, bro. It'll come up. At this point, yeah. everyone's just gonna submit something. <laughs> like fucking pots and pans. Ah, it's time to listen. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I want a hundred dollars, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No one else submitted anything. I fucking won. Can you believe that? <laughs> and everyone's just disappointed. This shit won. For real. You guys, both of the, both our, both our listeners failed us. You guys Fuck. suck. We won with pots and pans. Fucking fucking pants. You don't smoke weed much, are you ready? No, but uh, two years ago, I took a trip to Amsterdam for my birthday. I was like, I don't smoke weed. I don't get hyper. Fuck it. I'm going there for my birthday. Did you get any hookers? Um, No. Really? No. Did you really? That? No, I did not. Did you uh, go look? No. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, you no, looked. Oh, no. We, we went to go look, but a, a part of me was like, dude, you know what? I just don't trust people. And they were like, oh, but this is like, you know, they're, they're explaining everything. Oh, it's super safe and this, that. But part of me is like, you know what? With my luck, I'm the one guy that goes in there. <laughs> and that girl was like, I, you know what? I had the worst week ever. Nothing. Everyone, you know what I mean? Of course, I go there and fucking die. And I'm like, the only <laughs> asshole that dies. I'm like, fuck that. But I was really surprised. Cause I thought Amsterdam was gonna be like just like a like a European version of like Vegas. I thought it was gonna be like really crazy. And it's supposed to be really nice. And there. It's fucking beautiful. It's everyone's like, on a bike. It's like fairy tale land. I was like, what the fuck? Everyone's on a bike and everyone speaks really low and everyone's really soft. And I was like, what? And then yeah. of course you're there from New York and you're just like, you know, you what the fuck? You're yelling at people <laughs> yeah, like weed's you know, so terrible, oh, right? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, yeah, like I'm you know. You know, I was there with the, with the people I was with, and we're like, "Oh well, fuck it, let's go." First night, let's just see what this uh, space, you know, space cake is all about. Let's just see what happens. You went for edibles first from yeah. not smoking so, weed. Oh, that's edibles. a good idea. And, uh, we that's just a really went, smart you know, move. We just yeah. boom went for it, and I was like, "Let's see what happens with that and the Red Bull." Oh, what happens? Uh. <laughs> And my God, man, we walked for hours, nice. for hours. And we I went walked, on a trek. Yeah, you know, at one point, <laughs> a walkabout. Yeah, at one point, I was like, "This city never ends." It's like it feels like, it feels like somebody <laughs> was just rolling the city over and over. I'm like, "What the fuck?" It was great. It Meanwhile, was phenomenal. Just and at one point, uh, we were staying on this big like like boathouse. I don't even know how the fuck we made it on the boat like in the morning. But in the morning, I woke up and I was like, "Was it oh. docked?" Yeah, and. It was like so, like it was like you know, it's like docked. We had like a little, like little bridge. Again, I don't know how the fuck we made it on this bridge and everything. But I remember, well, I woke up in the morning and it was like I woke up and I was like, "Yep, I'm still there. Holy shit, this is still going!" Like, whoa. Then we went to the museum and it's like, it was like, wow, it was a crazy time. At one point, I'm like talking to myself half the time. Everyone's like, "Rudy, are you even?" You know, me and my friend, you know, a friend of mine, he's a real big mouth, yeah. and he just didn't speak for like seven hours. And I had, sometimes I'm like looking at him, I'm like. Yeah, you know, that like, friend of ours doesn't smoke either, and he had the same space cake. My God, was high for two days, I guess. Holy shit! <laughs> he didn't you know, smoke it, at all. It, it was it was a lot of fun. Not gonna lie, it was Good. a lot of fun, and you know, I definitely want to go back. But that it, wasn't your first experience um, consuming. No, yeah, it cannabis. was. It's like it was? it's like I can't smoke for shit. That sounds great. I, I mean, like, I, have, I have like pussy lungs. Like, yeah. If I smoke anything, it's like, bruh, bruh. It's like I like, just can't. First time we smoking cigarettes with those dudes. Oh tell we were dock it was workers. So funny. It was like, we were fucking it's winter time. It's fucking freezing. Like, you're freezing outside. Like, Give us some cigarettes. Yeah, we went outside in t-shirts. It's a bullshit with these group dudes. of people. I always feel bad Drunk. for people when they they have a bad experience doing that their first time. Like it should be a good experience. The edibles. Edibles can just. Cannabis in general, oh, you know. Oh no, man! Edibles was cool. And then another time we, we did it when we went to the Rembrandt Museum. Pff, fucking mine was just like blowing up. Wow. I was like, "Holy shit, this is awesome!" And they give you like these like little phones, you, and then you like type in the painting or the piece of art, and you like it tells you the whole history of it. And I'm like, "No." Oh, shit. the guided tour. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I'm talking to the phone. I'm like, "No fucking way! <laughs> oh, what the fuck! This is amazing!" <laughs> you know, and I'm looking at my friend, looking at his phone. And I'm like pointing to him to pick up your fucking phone, and I'm like. <laughs> And I'm like talking to him. I'm like, dude, this is the greatest thing ever. I could stay here for hours. And I'm like having this long conversation. I'm like, he's fucking down there looking at something else. It's like that that Eddie Griffith stand up bit oh God, yeah. where he's like, the inventor on the mic of the cell phone must have been high. He's like, I want to talk to somebody who ain't even here. Your Eddie Griffith voice is amazing. <laughs> you like good. Love it. Yeah, it good. You like my Eddie Griffith <laughs> tones right now okay kyle we need more impressions from you in the future yeah for sure oh God. you need to work on those and put them on a list i need to do that again hold on <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get his a game let's rewind let's rewind do better do better <laughs> 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 
the inventor of the phone must have been high. He's like, I want to talk to somebody who ain't even here. Is that better? <laughs> that, was good. that was good. That was good. And I'm not even being facetious. That was fucking. Nice. <laughs> I'll work on it. That's a big word. I'll work on it. That's great. <laughs> But it's definitely funny, like, just what it does to you. You know, you think you're one way because you, you just, you know, you normally drink. And you're like, oh, I drink, I get social. Then you take edibles and you're just like, wow, I just, I want to walk and think. I yeah. want to walk and yeah, I want to fucking Absolutely. think. Absolutely. And you want to walk and think. And anything, and then some things you don't even see. But then when you do see something, you're like, dad, I don't see that. That shit is talking to me, dude. I'm like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? And then you're like, yeah. fucking, you know, boom, in the zone. But again, and then, you know, you know other things, you're just like, I went where? What? Like what happened? The, yeah. di- the dialogue yeah. that I will have with myself with Ugh. doing nothing. I will lay right. on a couch like this, and th- I will have a full on journey. I'll have a full day. I'll talk to pe- like it. I won't talk to people, but it's almost like it'll break down parts of myself to where I'm having conversations within myself. Yeah. It's so weird. I it I, I don't amazing. like to do it a lot. I, I, but when I do do it, I like to do it big. Talk about edibles. And I, I like to do it by myself. Yeah. That I mean, that's the way for me. I, like, I like to turn, kind of off, turn off the TV, yeah. lay on the couch, and just zombie out. But, like, I'm not... I, from the outside, I look like I'm zombified. From the inside, there's a lot of shit happening. Nice. The cosmos is in your brain. Um, speaking of the cosmos, another time I... Uh, it was my ex-girlfriend's birthday. And, you know, she had a really shitty year, right? So a part of me was like, "Fuck, man, you know what? You know what? Um, we're going to the planetarium." Oh yeah. Sweet. And and she was like, you know, you know, a good okay. friend of mine gave me some really good edibles, and I was like, "All right, let's see what happens," you know. And you know, we go sit down half Allegedly. hour, like, half hour Allegedly. before the show. You know, she's like, "Let's go, let's have this." Whatever. Which one did you go see? Dark Universe. I saw the no, no, I wanted to see that one, but I saw one with Whoopi Goldberg, and that <laughs> fucked my mind. The up. Dark Universe one wasn't very good. Oh damn, it sucks. But I'm, right. I'm sitting there, and at one point, I'm like, oh, shit, I feel great. I feel great. And then it starts, and it's like Whoopi Goldberg, like, the universe. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? You will be Goldberg. I was great. like, Whoopi is here with me. I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, all right, it's cool. Then it's in Central Park, and it zooms out. Like, it zooms out, like, 100%. Now you're, like, somewhere in the atmosphere. I'm like, oh, fuck. Then it zooms out again, and now you're like somewhere by the moon. I'm like, holy shit! Then it zooms out. I'm somewhere by fucking Saturn, and I'm, I, I mean, you know, the, the whole room is like pitch dark. I'm just like, fuck! <laughs> and I just, I just yell out, I let out a soft fuck. It was, you like, yeah. it was like, it was like a, it was like a sound I was like, fuck. <laughs> and yeah, man, me, Whoopi, and my ex are like halfway across the universe. I am like losing my shit. And Whoopi's like, these is how you know, these are how stars are born, the big bang. And I'm like, every time like, shit's exploding, I'm just like, I can't deal with this right now. And, I'm, and right away, I don't know why I started thinking about. I'm like, how the fuck did people working for Darth Vader and the Empire deal with this, man? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I would have like, space. I would have space dimension. I would have fucking killed myself. Oh, oh my god! And at one point, when we get back into like, you know, it zooms in at one point, and it's like, you know, you get that far away, and then you come that far in, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Like for real? Like, and I'm worrying about work, yep. for real. So, and I'm yeah. worrying about like stupid and then shit. Perspective. Like, I need new Boom. sneakers. Like, no, new I don't need new sneakers. That's what it's about. Like, I need to be. I need to build a fucking robot or a spaceship. Like, <laughs> that's what I should be doing in my fucking time right now. I need to get there again. So true. Not so you, playing Candy Crush on your app. Get caught up in the menu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But it's like you know, like you know, I could say that the couple of times I've done it, they've been a lot of fun. It's been like something where it's like, okay, you know what? This is going to get weird, but it's going to be, I'm around good people or something very That's stimulating. That's important. Really important. You know, and, the, you know, I guess I'm lucky to say that every time I've done it, it's been something really cool. Because I know some people have done, you know, they've, they've had really bad bad experiences. Oh, yeah. But it's one of those things, again, where it's like, you know, I guess it's like, where are you? Like, it yeah. goes with anything. If you're going to go drink, do you want to go drink in your basement by yourself? Or do you want to drink amongst good, you know, good company right. in your basement? You know, now you're not by yourself, you know? Maybe you need some time alone, maybe you don't. But it's one of those things where it's you you can pick and choose what do you want to do something with or who you, you know you don't want to do something with. Anybody yeah. ever have any good stories about drinking by yourself? No, I don't Yeah, think I you, do. You do? Yeah. When I was in college I um I used to play uh NBA Street. Nice. You guys remember that game? Oh, so yeah. good. It was like it so was like NBA, it, was it was like, like NBA, NBA Jam, Jam but cooler. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah but more cool. better graphics. Exactly. <laughs> and I used to play this game by myself. Boom shakalaka. Where 
if I won a game, I, I'd take a beer bong. <laughs> a beer bong. And then, yeah, because I would. This, so when I was in college, this is this is a funny thing that I quarterback, just quarterback I just in remember, college. I just remember this quarterback Kyle. from about. Uh, I'm gonna go with like October of my freshman year until maybe the end of my junior year. I only drank out of a beer bong. I bring, <laughs> I, I would bring a beer bong with me everywhere because it's just the way I like to drink it. Like I, I, Virginia. I got really good at it. This was a Bucknell actually. <sighs> And there were no bars, so I would like I would take it to all the frat parties, and like this was, it was like my beer bong, dude. This thing was worn in like a catcher's mitt, like I had it set just the it was just the right level of like soft in the tube, so you could like pinch it off, and I had like the system of like wiping my nose and getting the foam off, so there was like nothing in it, and then I was so good, boom, just just. Injected How many into, beers? into my stomach. How many beers no. is, it a, it is in a beer bong? One beer. One well, beer. I mean, okay. you can put more, but okay. like, but I would do one beer at a time. Okay. And uh, that's just how I drank. Just shock on like, the fucker. Well, it was the easiest way for me to do it. Poor liver. Because we only <sighs> drank, we only drank beer. You know, like right. we, we we're young, and that we, that's all we could, you know, get our hands on easily, right? Exactly. Um, and I just I had like a weak stomach to where like if if I had much. Um, uh, like bubbles in my stomach, like I would throw up really easily. So with a beer bong, you could just get all of that. Um, what, are, what are those bubbles and soda called? What's that called? Carbonation. Carbonation. I could get all the carbonation out and just go straight into my stomach. And I could handle, I could put down like 10, 15 beers that way <laughs> for me <laughs> without <laughs> without puking. But you build a tolerance to that. Yeah, and I got yeah. really Especially good at it. Especially the way that you do it. It's just like, oh, yeah, I got hardcore. really good it's like at it. One, two. All right. No, but here, get used to that. Three, but four. Here's, here's the end of my story. Here's the end of my story. And if I if I lost a game of NBA Street, then I'd have to take two beer. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Jesus. And I would see how many games I could All play. Right. So the original question was, has anyone had a positive experience? Yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. I, it's I a jerk off drunk. That was pretty positive. It, it, well, <laughs> that, that's just a challenge. It lasts a while. Said, I'm going to get you drunk, big boy. Yeah, no, I'm going to take advantage uh, of you. And my thing was, like, with the alcohol, so you, you basically... You increased your tolerance. Oh yeah. So that yeah. was the positive. But I wasn't looking for something like that. Now <laughs> we're sharing drugs to us. Now we're sharing drugs. <laughs> no. oh, Last week, while well, me and Rudy was watching a friend's house, we were playing uh you guys ever play Army of Two? No. It's a fucking awesome game. It's a game Such made a, for I don't two, have a console. It's made for two players. It's just a, it's a shooter, right? Bro y game where you you're customize mercenaries your character. you run and just blow up it's some so third awesome. world country. Killing Mexicans. Play online? Whatever, dude. Yeah, yeah. So me and Rudy, we were eating cucumbers and salami, playing this game at like one in the morning, That's drinking decadent. wine. And uh, it's whatever cucumbers every, in every, every, the refrigerator. So, you open it, you're like, we can make this yeah. work. And we, we, we can make yeah, little yeah, sandwiches it was, and cucumbers it wasn't even and salami. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, were, we were chefs overnight. We were, we're like, like boom, 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 making bow. this happen. Official <laughs> meal yeah. of me head on mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> and, and salami. <laughs> so... So me and Rudy are playing this game, and we didn't work out that day. We were like, ah, oh, fuck, fuck work it out. So we went, to, we went to Mel's house, and we're like, all right, every time we die, we have to do burpees and push-ups. Like yeah. 10. Every time That's we right. died. I died 80 times. <laughs> like, I think. Man. He, Maybe was, it. He, he had the pump going on had, at one point. He like at had, 3 in the morning, I was looking like a hulk. Like, just, just like Like I had up. the biggest pump I've ever had in my life. <laughs> just like, <laughs> like, he's like. I did hypertrophy for a month that night. Just yeah. I was like, oh, should I beat this guy? <laughs> That's like an actual <laughs> thing. So like you guys like swell up from the, the Yeah, that, the pump thing is really real. Yeah, it's, okay. it's a real so, thing. Like it was like every time we died. Yeah, we, we, we had a bottle of white wine. because Yeah, we drinking wine. They just had it there. So it was like, all right. So every time we died, we would. Take a swig and and rum. We'll just start doing some fucking push-ups, all right? And, then, and eventually, it's like we're good at this shit. We're not gonna fucking die. And eventually, yeah. no, like empty bottle. We're both there, like we need to fucking pull it together, bro. Because I swear to God, I swear to God, we're crying if you fucking die right now. My fucking hands are killing me. But like this, this hurts, bro. This hurts. And then we had like our friend watch us another night, the same night. Emily, play, and yeah. she's like, what the? She's just like. This is like I could watch yeah, this all was, night. Yeah, she was so stoned just watching yeah, two she was, idiots. She's like, this is great. She's like, I wanted to play before. She's like, no, I could do this. I, like right now. <laughs> I could just watch you idiots do this. It <laughs> but it's like, it's. I think it's really good. You know, like you know, video games. You know, yeah, you, can't, you can't just be a couch potato. Do something. No, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing. That's that's a quite an evening. That's that's 
exercise, yeah, teamwork, <laughs> friendship building, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then and then you you got a healthy snack. Yeah. It was, you know, you got some wine for the for the uh, antioxidants, the antioxidants, Boom. and then you had your your meat and your vegetable. That was good. Well, it's one of those things where you you know you, it's you, a well balanced evening. I say, yeah. you learn a lot about a friend, you know, watching right. him play a, a you know a, a mercenary game Their style, yeah. you know, you, style you, you know, play. You think they're a really calm, well, you know, you know, you know, well thought out person. Like, oh well, you know, like I like I think Alec for a twenty one year old at times is like you know it's like he's. You know, not your typical idiot. You know, yeah. like so how was he in? How was he in the video game? Was oh he like a sadistic God, are you fuck? serious? I'm a fucking moron. He's like, <laughs> it's like this is a door. We're gonna breach on three. One, boom! Ah! <laughs> He's like walks in, just throws grenades, man. Just throwing grenades. I'm like, son of a bitch. Like fuck, man. And then he's just getting it done. Getting it done, and then before I know, it, I gotta go run and like you know drag his dead body so out. Yeah, dude. If you die, you, you can save. Yeah, him. so I gotta hit him with a fucking like um like like a fucking like it's, it's like an epipen or fucking yeah. like <laughs> something to just wake him up or some shit like that. <laughs> and the whole time sounds awesome. The whole time, the whole time he's there, and he's like, "Did you see that? I killed like three before they got me." I'm like, "They fucking got you, you idiot! They fucking got you!" And he's like, "No, no, no! I fucking I fucking own that dude. Did you see what I did to him?" I'm like. No. All the while he's pumped. Yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. just jacked up. <laughs> Alex Smash. Right, drinking red wine. I mean, white wine. <laughs> white wine. Uh, yeah, white wine. Uh, like, <laughs> Man. Yeah, Mel, the uh, the guy that we house sat for, um, or I house sat for, he sent me his long text. He's like, first, I'm assuming that you brought a girl over to my house. And how dare you, blah, blah, blah. And there was a sock in my bed. And I know it's not yours because it's small. And there's wine in the trash. So I know you brought a girl here. I was like, it's me and Rudy playing video games. <laughs> Don't worry, though. Nothing gay happens. <laughs> How can you make Wait, how does sock cool? get in the bed? Emily, she left a fucking sock in the bed. Uh, yeah. Fucking Emily, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was fun. Yeah, Rudy, cool. Rudy took me out for the first time when I turned twenty-one. Where did we go? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we. <laughs> Rudy, Wait, I was there. No, no, no. You? No, yeah, yeah. I went. Was that for me or my uncle's birthday? It was though? your twenty-first birthday. Okay, so we did that. Was that my twenty first? Oh no, the, you took me after. Oh, Rudy took me out before, like one day oh, well, before I was that with your uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that the videos you guys had that uh, the oh, vine? you guys were in? You guys were somewhere awesome. Uh, I don't know where you we guys were. We adopted a man. white girl that day. We pulled some fire alarms. I laid down next to a homeless guy. You remember any of this? No, I do. Oh, yeah, okay, right, yeah. Cool. See, that's, that's what you should be doing at twenty one. Good work. Did you guys put her back up for? Wait, adoption? can we can we talk about last night for a second? Can we talk? Yeah, about yeah. The last fact night that we went to this fucking oh my god bar. Oh, that's so sad. That so, made me so sad. Is it, what it, happened? Isn't it dark? I, it got so bad. No, it happened. But it's I was good like, for you. It, it, okay, like you, you it's know, good for you. you know that movie Taken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. You know, you Liam know, Neeson like, is a bad motherfucker. You know, like when he finds like the poor girls, the, the, like in the, the, in the whore yeah. buildings, like yeah. where dudes are just like taking turns, yeah, it's pretty just, gross, like destroying them. It, I walked and in fat. there, and I got a feeling like that. Oh, like no. it wasn't that. That wasn't happening. But you, you felt like, like you were in a spot where human trafficking like the, happened. The taken situation, like the whore, the you know, the the, the, the tarp built whorehouses in taken would be like a hundred. <laughs> Right, and I didn't. It wasn't like that, but I got like a level of like ten out of the hundred. You know what I mean? It was like one tenth of that, but like on the same spectrum, the same spectrum <laughs> of sad spectrum, where you're just like, oh no, like they, okay, so Bad these poor, these bartenders uh. were wearing <laughs> like bikinis, like full okay. bikinis, right? Like string bikinis or like yeah, one pieces? Yeah. Or no, like they pieces? were string, like they were oh, like wow. tied on the side and like with shoes. And like, like they were heels? they were like dirty bikinis. Like they weren't like they had like frayed oh, edges to man. them and stuff. Like you could tell like they this was like their uniform that they wore a lot. Like it wasn't like this I they were like, Hey, Kyle, there's this bar where the, the bartenders <laughs> wear bikinis. I was like, This sounds awesome, let's go check it out. We went there and it was instantly like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds really awful. It was so sad, dude. Like uh, you could, t the the owner of the bar weighs like five hundred pounds, and he's like oh, slobbering he's all over himself. Cootie, and dude. he was like behind the bar, and you can tell he's just like slobbering over. The I don't know what this, looks this like, situation he, is. He looks like evil Mario, but he Wario. was just like, yeah, yeah he's just, just like, one giant cootie. If you took Wario yeah. and, and sloth and from these the Goonies, poor oh. girls that like really like shouldn't have been in bikinis. 
Were they like one Eastern European girls? No, both of them. Colombian. Both of them should no, have they, been I think, in they were, I think they were Puerto Ricans. Oh, they shouldn't have been in bikinis. And they shouldn't have been in those bikinis. He couldn't even like give them like new bikinis, like nice <laughs> bikinis. Like, Wait, the like, girls themselves? They, were, like, like they, they had like floral prints like on the bikini. <laughs> like, it, you know what I mean? It was, it, it, every level of it was like not, didn't make you Did feel good. The girls good. look uncomfortable? Yes, I by to default. You? I was uncomfortable for them. You know, like okay. I wanted to go back and like put a towel over them well, and be like, it's going to be them. okay. It's okay. okay. Let's get now. you out of here. <laughs> like, let's, we'll find you a place. We'll God, find you're you a such place a hero, to be. man. We're going to report this guy to ICE. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get you out. Oh, man. He's like, he's like Liam Neeson. He's going to walk in there and just be like, God. <laughs> <laughs> just like, fuck everybody up and just be like driving a car through this place. Let's get, get the, the fuck, fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Damn. Damn. A lot of interesting places down there, downtown. Where did where where was this place? This is down the Nassau, financial district. Nassau Nassau Street. Street. Oh, sounds yeah, about a right. lot of interesting people that live down oh there. Oh my god. Like we there's a lot folks. of interesting people in the financial district. I think after the whole definitely definitely after the whole you know flood? like the, with the flood and the attacks like over 10 years ago like I just down there it became at one point it was just like a ghost town down there. Right. And then like a lot of business left and then they're bringing in a lot of like Apart, like a lot of studios are, you know, just opening up everywhere. Like people were moving in. Like yeah. I have a lot of friends that, not, I used to have more friends live down there who were moving in from Brooklyn. They were like, it's cheaper to live in the financial in the financial district than Brooklyn. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. For now, yeah, for now. This place looked like it hadn't changed at all. Like right. that dude oh, was no. there the whole time. He like, he, like he was buried under all the like <laughs> all the rubble. The He's like, nope, we're staying open, ladies. Stay there. <laughs> stay there in your bikinis. I know you only have one. Don't you worry. You'll be fine, sweet ass. Like smacks him on the butt, like leaves. <laughs> like where are you going? It'll come oh. back. Business will come back. They'll dig us out by next year. Till then, come over smoke here. Smoke the cigar, honey. Kyle. Sit on my knee. Kyle, smoke, smoke the cigar while you do this. <laughs> honey, come here. Oh, sit right here. That's oh, totally that's what that nice. guy sounds like. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice, honey. Yeah, you've been doing squats. I feel like <laughs> I, can I can tell. I feel like we got there on like their C day. Like oh. their C day. Well, the, well, their A day. Is there a D day? Well, well <laughs> the A day is fucking scary. The A day, you'll have people like Murph. Murph. There. Oh, oh my God, God. Murph. The A day is just. You just guys have a friend named Murph. Well, well, he's not our friend. I don't know what he is. <laughs> 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 you guys have an acquaintance but named Murph. Really strange because he, he like, like he always talks like, yeah. to us. He's this airman, a retired U.S. vet, oh, God. and he always walks in. And goes, "You guys from America?" It's just like, like, and I was like, "No, we're Lebanese." Like, yeah. I just like said that right away because I had a beard. Yeah. I was like, "Crazy." He's like, "Oh, do you hate this country?" It's like fuck, <laughs> like crazy. It's, it's like this is happening like, maybe, right now. Maybe I do. Yeah. <laughs> You're point, Lebanese? No, not at all. I thought you were. Yeah, I'm like Irish, Italian, Puerto Rican. You yeah, fuck, yeah. you crazy fuck. Yeah, I just yeah. want to see what this guy would oh, say. I was like, "What?" No, so yeah, I would never yeah. do that. He was what? upset. He, he was People upset. have been killed for less. I know. You and I talked about how we look, you know, Middle Eastern. Oh. We do. Yeah. Uh huh. And Murph was just Dude. like, okay. The Murph was like, what happened? What do you say? He goes, you guys, you guys American. Yeah. You guys, you, you guys like America. You guys love America. And we're Serious. like, what the fuck? So you know, I'm laughing and I'm like, what? And he's like. <laughs> I see Alec's face, you know, I turned to look at Alec and he's giving me that, what the fuck, guys? Like, dude, are you serious? Like, Whoa. and he just looks at me and he goes, we're Lebanese. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. I'm like, dude. You can both pass yeah. for that. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Because now this guy is going to basically gonna be like, oh, okay, cool. Just like, shank. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Like, gym moves are going to come in right now. I'm like, all gym right, moves. fuck that. So uh, at one point he was just like, no, it's cool. He was just like, it's, now he wanted to be our friend. I don't know how. But we're like, no, we're, like, we're, like, we're born here, right? Then we started talking at one point. He, he leaves and comes back and he goes, no, seriously, uh, are you guys like undercover right now? I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, he about? thought we were like Al-Qaeda or some like, shit. Like undercover. Like, I was like, we're like, oh, oh my God. It's pretty crazy. God, yeah, we're we dock go. workers from Lebanon, that mind. is what I said. Yeah. And then like, I think like, an like another Friday we went in there. Because on Fridays, you you'll have all the people that are working like on like all the train stations and like on, uh, on, the, on, on the new towers. So you, it's a whole bunch of like just like steel workers there. So it's like this blue collar, like everyone in there is just like it's a set, knuckle right? scrapers. they just a bunch of like, blah, you know, kind of guys in there. And on Friday, we're in there and another Friday. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, what? I'm like, it's Murphy. <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, no, he's Rudy, no, no. And I'm just like, Murph. <laughs> Murph. <laughs> Murph. And he's like, motherfucker. I'm like, and 
comes down, so he's like, loud. yeah, God, man. Everyone, I think everyone in the bar hates him. He's everyone like that guy has that, to like, hate him. grabs you and hugs you. Like, oh, I smell like vomit. And I'm just beating <laughs> yeah. the face all day. Shit, man. You guys need to take this guy out and wear like American flag. Murph should be on the show. Murph, Jesus. And he was telling us how... He was in some bar in Long Island, and he ended up getting his ass kicked by some dude. Makes sense. And, and, and at one point, the cops were going to come and get him, but he ended up punching the guy, and the guy fell, and he was running, and he was like somewhere on the side of the road, and the cops pull him over like, are you the guy we're looking for? And he's just like- I don't believe anything Murph says. Murph's just fucking out of his mind. Murph's just crazy. You know? And it's like sometimes I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, it's, again, again, like that part of town, you meet some interesting people. They, remember when we met, uh, what was it, Daniel? The, the art curator? And three hundred dollar hairdresser, yeah, that was, you know that was a, took us to his, his 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 warehouse apartment that was where really, he had underground plays being done in his living room. Yeah, I was like, what? And Gosh. actresses were drinking wine like it was fucking the rivers of yeah. Babylon. It was insane. So I mean, as far as him being a businessman, he's a fucking genius. So he was a hair, he's, he's a hairstylist, and I was like, okay, you work in a salon. He's an entrepreneur. Yeah, so he's something. Much, he has this big like like loft, and he has a little section where he just works on his clients, high end clients that come in, and he has. And art, you know, he has like some artists that he's like pretty much curating for like two months. Yeah, he's a full and art he gallery. just sells all this to his high end clients. So he's like getting double income at home, hanging out. And when, when he's not doing that, he's renting his place out for like, like Circus Soleil style for like, acting for shit. like some you know shows. And he just takes a walk down the block and sits there and plays pool. I'm like, it's fucking ridiculous. What a I'm like, surreal what the sort of life. Fuck? It was a weird day. I'm like, you know what? And some people, like, you know, some I feel like some people have a good handle on life. Like, they make this shit work for them, and other people yeah. are just. Just grinding really yeah. hard for no reason. Like they're like, we're like, what are you really trying to yeah. do? You're like seven jobs. You know, I'm about to pay this. My car insurance, all this shit. It's like, no, you're doing this wrong. Yeah, that was the day uh, he invited all of us and Kyle too to uh, that the gay guy opened, opened, invited us over to that fountain party <laughs> where he's turning on a fountain that has been on for a hundred years. Yeah, it was very somehow weird. I was like, Whoa. what the? We fuck? didn't go. You didn't. <laughs> we didn't go. <laughs> we didn't go to that. You guys Probably. didn't experience the fountain. Though. No. <laughs> no, no fountain. For oh, us. I think I remember you guys talking about this guy. You wanted to have him on the show, I think. Probably. I yeah. want everybody in the show. But I think that's the cool thing about having a show like this in New York. Like, pff, you take a, you know, you walk down the street for like two blocks. You can be anyone. You'd be like, all right, put that guy. We need to talk to this idiot, or we need to talk to this genius, or that guy. You know, one of the scary things, not scary things, but really like interesting things about Nassau. When I first started going there, a friend of mine, Tiffany, she was bartending there. So she was like, just pass by. She goes, I'll, you know, I'll take care of everything. So I'll always pass by every Friday and pick her brain. But her her regulars that would go there, oh, man, they were fucking really strange, you know? There was one guy who would sit there. He looked like Doc Brown from, like, um, Back to the Future. <laughs> he had this really wild white hair, and he would just sit there with this huge book bag hunched over, and he just wouldn't talk to anyone. He would just sit there, and every time we finish, you know, she already knew he'll have four and leave and not say anything. And I'm like, what, what is this guy's deal? And he'll have, like, a drink, and two guys will be having a conversation. He'll turn to them and be like, Ah, uh, go fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll look at them and just start laughing. <laughs> they don't go back to looking at the wood, you know, on the fucking bar. I'm like, holy shit. And I'm like, Tiffany, this guy, what's his deal? She's like, Rudy, that guy's a fucking genius. This guy, is he's, she's like, he's... He's a, he's, like, he's, he's a fucking like physicist or some shit like that. He's like a professor. He's fucking out of his mind. I was like, holy shit. She goes, yeah, he just comes here every Friday and just like, this is what he does. He has his four. It's like it's like math. He has his four, you know, shoots out a couple of fuck yous to some cold people. <laughs> but she goes, at this, people, yeah, at this point, everyone already knows who he is. And then he just gets up and she goes, and by like, she goes, it's clockwork. By like 9, 10, he's out of the bar. That's it. And it's kind of weird. It's like, wow, oh, man. Sometimes it's like... People are just so programmed at things, you know? Like, I'm going to come in and have a beer, say, fuck you, high five, I got to get out of here. Who was the guy that you met the other day? The crazy long-haired hippie dude? Bjorn. Bjorn. Yeah, I don't, want to I don't even okay. want to talk about Bjorn because okay. I actually want him on the show. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. um, <laughs> I don't want to ruin anything. My bad. But yeah, now so far you meet a lot of weird fucking people. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought you could have the idea where you just you pick somebody off the street and it's like, let's go. Yeah. Come on. One hour. Come on. <laughs> let's just do Come it. Come on. We'll give you. Just <laughs> shuttle them in, put them in the chair and be like, hey. What's your Bitcoin account? What's up? <laughs> yeah. How's it going? That'll be the day. <laughs> That'll be when Bitcoin really makes it. People uh, are being robbed have of wallets. their Bitcoin. Right. What's your private key? <laughs> <laughs> What's a private key? <laughs> Damn it. Give me your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you, asshole. Yeah, but they're just talking about interesting fucking blocks. Like 25th Street. That one block alone. Oh, my, oh my God. God. The crack I, block? That block Jesus. is interesting. 
Like sometimes I, you know, fact, like you know, back then when I had to be at work at five in the morning in the summer, you know, get off the train at like four thirty. What street? Like twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Literally yeah. a block yeah, right, right there. Yep. And you know, I don't, I'll be walking on the Mad block, Max. and I'm like, oh shit, it's like crime alley gotham city it's like oh, oh that's shit. how this place that's how 24th is too right? yeah and it's yeah. like it's like night of the living dead you see every like you know the guys who don't want to stay at the you know at, at the shelter yeah. they'll just stay outside well, and it's it's, it's, a, it's a methadone shelter yeah, right, something right like there. That. Really? on that block yeah oh. so we have like, this scaffolding here and there's always unfortunate yeah and it's humans like, right underneath it's really sad mm -hmm. so if i'm here late and i walk out and it's like oh this is sad yeah it oh, sucks because like, like it's mad i Max can't i can't do anything because it's like they're all sleeping you know, so like I want to like give him a dollar or something, but like, I'm not approaching someone and disturbing their sleep. No, <laughs> I, just, I just walked to Home Depot to go try to find a humidifier, and and this guy was literally sitting on in front of like the newspaper place, and you know had a sign, and this guy snapped a snapped a picture and kept walking. Oh, the guy flipped out. The homeless guy flipped cool. out on the dude because he didn't even give him a dollar, but he took a picture of him. That's I'm like, cool. you need your ass beat. <laughs> you don't do that shit here. That's so rude. What? You know, it's crazy. So methadone. Clinic? I think so, right? Something like it, it's, that. It's, it's, uh, it's like a homeless shelter and like drug rehab Not center, something. I think. I mean, you know, you see like one, at least once every other day, you'll see like the fire department, you know, there with like ambulance and they're like breaking doors down. Somebody locked themselves in somewhere and they're mm -hmm. like, get them. Oh, it's, but it, it's an interesting block. Like you see a lot of interesting people. One of the trainers was, was robbed. Yeah. Right over here. Yeah, you got, yeah. You got, you got like got into a fight with like five dudes. Yeah, wow. beat up and jumped. It's a massive trainer too. That dude was huge. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. It's yeah. weird to have like Sixth and Fifth Avenue, Seventh Avenue, which is well, in, in the in between streets. It's the clinic, and then there, right down there, there's uh, just one avenue over. Is um, it's all projects. Yeah, I think it's Section Eight or whatever. I don't know how that works. You know what? Yeah. It I all used works to live across the street from projects when I first moved here, and and later in Brooklyn when I first my first apartment was across from the LG projects, Oof. and I lived with two white roommates and it was just it was a little disturbing from them i'm i'm from areas like that yeah you know so i'm used to them and i feel I where feel are you from home. again i'm from i'm originally from new jersey from okay. uh passaic patterson and clifton oh Pat nice yeah so you know i'm i'm used to that it's, you know primarily black and hispanic areas you know and uh when i was 11 i got moved to this white suburbs which was just like total culture shock for me but like i'm used to it so when i go you know when i first moved here you know i was interning at a studio working at a guitar center and like you know, I would come home super late at night, but it was like nothing to me, you know. But my friends, like, they didn't leave the fucking house. <laughs> 11, 11 or 12 hit. It was like, no, we're staying here. <laughs> like, like, well, don't you guys want something from the store downstairs? Come with me. They're like, no, nah, we're good. <laughs> yeah. And like, there would always be shots outside. And there was one time we were sitting on the couch and they were watching news and there was, there was a cop shooting block away and there was a precinct it would happen in front of the precinct which was just the shooting <laughs> happened in front of the precinct <laughs> which was like a block or two away from our apartment we were on a corner too across the street from the project so well, i guess it's a good spot to be shooting yeah you can be shooting anywhere <laughs> in front of the detention center <laughs> which is just crazy but it's just funny how you get used to things you know some people like my girl she's from upstate new york and i would never want her walking around here because i just know she wouldn't be able to handle it yeah you know? Cow. None of that where you grew up? Nope. Yeah. Lucky. Suburbs. White people. Don't yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, it's, it's good. Yeah, like right now, like if my you could choose, that'd be the one. Like growing up, like my neighborhood was it was mixed and now my neighborhood is just it's all like all Hispanic. Yeah. A lot of black, a lot of Indian. But it's like my neighborhood really changed big time. Like it was a lot of mom and pop stores. What lot. neighborhood is it? It's not uh, anymore. No, I mean, like the good, like back then you actually had like you know a place where you know they it was like a butcher shop, like you know like yeah, yeah. you know real like oh like this we only cut meat and you yeah. know like shoe repair you know people like things like that. Where it was like yeah. it's a real mom and pop store. That's my neighborhood right now. All the, like yeah, they're all gone. Everyone fucking left. Everyone's gone. Now you just see like you know it was like a KFC and you know you see like all these Palace like, fried chicken and shit like that. It's like oh man, that's a thing. And it's like. Yeah. Oh. And that's like the hoods chicken yeah. spot palace. And, oh. and you really know when a neighborhood's going bad. You really know when it's going bad when and like Kennedy. Like like yeah. you know, the, growing up there was like three bars there. Like on like Jamaica Avenue. Okay. And you really know when the shit's going oh, bad. Oh, it's Queens. Yeah. I live in Astoria and oh. I still have some of that. So like when bars start to close, the moment where it's like you going to a bar just to get a pint when that's not even a good investment anymore, you just having a beer. 
I was like, oh, this neighborhood's going to shit. Like three bars closed. Like everyone's just leaving. It's like, right. well, that's it. Then you see like, you know, liquor store. It's like, oh, that's what it is. All oh, right. Like, oh, fuck. That's what happens. Man. Yeah, it's like, that's it. And then, yeah, then shortly after, yeah, like past couple of years, the fucking shit that happens in my neighborhood. I'm like, what? Like, when did that happen? Some girl, I think it was like a year ago, left Burger King. She was finished working, and some guy followed her and like knifed her like I think it was like 11, 12 times. I'm like, fuck. you gotta be fucking kidding me! Like, what the fuck? Then a part of me's like, you know what? Fuck that shit. I mean, so where do you live now? Same place. Oh, okay. yeah, same place. You leave it. Same place. Yeah, I live in Astoria, and I still have you know the butcher, the produce spot, the, Gee, the shoe awesome. guy. You know, like I still have all that stuff, but it's changing because it's getting more and more gentrified. Like more people, more and more people that were there are moving out, and all the new like. We're getting kind of like all the overspill from yeah. from Williamsburg and Brooklyn coming up to to Astoria, and I'm getting all those new art spots and all that stuff, and you know it's kind of crazy. Yeah, my neighborhood's doing the opposite. It's going very, it's getting very gingerfied. There's a lot of uh, like uh, condos everywhere opening now. Like what, they Coney Island by Coney Island, yeah. Like yeah. they they demolished like three like mom and pop supermarkets that yeah. were in the neighborhood and just put all these fucking condos up. Yeah, because it's it, getting so fucking expensive. You know, the whole place was what just, wasn't it bought by a, a company and they were letting it they were basically just letting it rot. Yeah. So they can yeah, yeah, remodel. Yeah. yeah, like even the building next to me was there like I think from jump. Like I think it was one of the first buildings ever right. made there. It's gone now. Like I'm surprised that my bar apartment building's still there. But it, it, there's a condos everywhere and fucking everything's super expensive and they're so, gonna be changing so the whole annoying. layout of that place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gonna be like yeah. a giant like a you know tourist attraction. Pretty much actually. It's a lot of Russian businesses now too. Yeah. Well, it's always been a predominantly Russian area. No, not at I all. Thought. It was no? all Italian and Irish. And uh, then it switched think, over. What am I thinking? Oh, the little Odessa? That's what I'm thinking. Probably. That's Russian. I'm in Bensonhurst. So okay. Yeah. Now that's it's, Italian. No, it's well, not anymore. Now it's super Russian. <laughs> now it's super Russian. <laughs> super Russian and like super Indian. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Russian, man. Nice. Just mix it up. Their night, their clubs are crazy. You ever look at a Russian? My uncle used to live like blocks away from my uh, from Mona's place, right? Yeah. And he, he would look down, and there was a Russian club in front of there. He said every Friday night, there'd be some of the most amazing street MMA fights he's ever seen really? in his life. Yeah, because they're Russian. So, like, he'd be looking down and see, like, these high kicks being thrown and people shooting double legs and fucking throwing bows. Nice. Like, some of the most educated brawls he's ever seen in wow. his life. Right across from the streets every Friday night. I'd be like, all right, it's go time. Like, it's, <laughs> it's go- Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. That's <laughs> awesome. Pointy <laughs> shoes. <laughs> They all wear those fucking like white, Dominican boots. Yeah, the shoes. white like snake skin. Yeah, boots, it's so the weird. Cowboy boots and the it's like nice crocodile them. boots, bro. Yeah. Like whatever. And they throw in head kicks. The matching and shit. belt. It's awesome. <laughs> and their earring, their one earring. Right. Gator boots, gator belt, the gold buckles. It's so great. It's so good. It's the thing. I haven't seen a good bar brawl in a while. I mean, I, I guess it's a good thing, yeah, but I've uh, not seen one in a long time. Where I'm like, again, I guess it's a good thing. I've never been in a bar fight. That's at good. All. Oh god! I not to be. That seems dangerous. I, was, I I always fear the the consumption of alcohol around mass amount of people because of that. Yeah. Because I know it makes people. It kind of you all know, lowers your inhibitions. So but much then, ego. You know the people that that have a large amount of ego and, and testosterone and, and and just anger like it just just multiplies. Blows that shit up. Well, I mean, but it's also like you could be really good at at bar fights. Yeah, I'm sure that's a skill. Like, what, like, there's, there. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of pride myself, Kyle, on my ability to be good at a bar fight. And yeah. there's, there's some, there's some tricks. Holy like, shit, I want to hear really, this. Go. Being really good at a bar fight, fight doesn't mean that you're good at fighting. Okay, it just means you're good at a bar fight. Have that's you, it. You've had experience. I got good at bar fights. I'm very good at bar fights. <laughs> go. Yeah, I mean, like, okay. So rule one. Punch first and and punch effectively Where? and quickly. In face. Right in the middle of the face. Okay. <laughs> you go right in the middle, right straight. In the, you don't have to hit them that hard, but you have to hit them square in the middle of the nose. So once you do because that, can you back you off hits, a second? If you hit somebody perfectly square, right in the middle of the nose, their both God. eyes completely welt up. They will not be able to see for five minutes. They you have them, you're you've won the fight. As long as they don't have any other friends, yeah. so you have to you have to make sure. So this is the guy that's drinking by himself. Yeah, drinking. yeah. You have yeah. to you have to make sure before you throw that punch that like either that you have physicist. you have more or bigger friends behind you than they do. So you have to assess the situation. You it, you you have to figure out if this person knows what they're doing too, because they could be really good at bar fights, uh, which I've lost a couple of 
bar fights before. For the same reason? All of these things have added in my toolbox, so I've gotten much better at <laughs> nice. it. There, it one, there was one, there was one, one incident in particular in Baltimore where I had uh, I had won maybe two or three bar fights, so I had I had high. I was very arrogant. Were you in a competition? I was very, co- I was very cocky at this point, uh, yeah. and I was leaving a bar three and zero at like yeah about three in the morning, and uh, and we're all leaving. Everybody's leaving the club, and there's this little Asian guy, oh. like this five foot two Asian dude Dangerous. that bumps into me, <laughs> like on purpose, and he Dangerous. looks at me. He looks at me in the face. He goes, "You got beef." <laughs> And I'm like, you got beef. I look back and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> a man who accepts and like, a challenge. And I like look at my friends. I'm like, <laughs> watch this. He kicked me in the face. <laughs> like roundhouse heel kick to the side of my head. Like spun me around. And he, he pulled my move. He hit first. <laughs> one, and one, he had the ability to kick people in the face. He was, was, he was shorter than you, too? He was very 5'2". I mean, a good I didn't hear the foot dive, shorter than me. I mean, but elevated his heel mm-hmm. up into the, yeah, my ear. That happens. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> drop me, just completely <laughs> drop me. <laughs> My two friends like came rushing in, and then a cop like fucking comes out with his like billy club and like s- snaps it out, and he's like, "Hey, <laughs> this is over." <laughs> and they like drug me away. <laughs> so I like woke they up. I woke up like twenty minutes revival. later with a bloody ear. <laughs> like I thought my that's... skull had been crushed, and I learned a lesson. And and that's you have to assess. Your situation. Make Assess sure that the this beef. person, even if they look like <coughs> shit, they, they they don't look. They don't have to look like somebody that could kick your ass. But uh, you have to assess. Like, if is this is it possible? That this person is better <sighs> at bar fights than me. But if you notice that they don't have the they don't have the skills, and you'll know guys that don't want to be in a fight because they're like they love to talk shit. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if they're the ones that are talking, 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 or like pushing. You punch them right now. Like, just <laughs> okay. go right now. Punch them in the face. Good right in the middle of the face right now. What kind of talk? As long as they don't that's, have that's one fear I have because, like, I'm a very docile person. I'm a pacifist just by nature. And one of the things that happens is I'm a big guy. So people mistake that for, like, oh, I'm a tough guy, you know? But no, I'm actually quite a pussy like <laughs> i like i like you know i like i like to talk shit out i have always gotten well, myself that's, out that's of the thing as like, you know, guys don't talk shit. but nowadays fight talk about fighting like well, they'll tell no, you, I never I'm talk kick about your that. ass, just, bro. Yeah. And it's like if you have to tell me that you're gonna kick you're your ass, gonna kick you're not gonna ass. kick my right. ass. Right. Like I'm gonna punch you in the face <laughs> right now or before you, you even know. Ear. Or yeah. kick you in the, in the ear. Right. ear before and I never, you even know what's happening. Never talk shit like that. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not a person to be like, oh, I can kick your ass. Mm. Like, I'm just like, all right, let's let's figure this out. You know? Mm. Yeah. The guy. It's like the thing is about nowadays. It's like. But the thing is, I never, I never feel unconfident about getting into a fight. Like, if it has to happen, I'll do it. But the thing is, you never know nowadays, like, who... Because with all the UFC and the MMA training and shit like that, you Dude, never know yeah, it's who... Fucking, it's the only reason why you're super careful. <laughs> That's why I'm asking, like, how do you know, you know? It's so true. But, but I still believe. I yeah. sti- Here's the thing. I do still believe that I could, like, whoop one of those guys given the right <laughs> circumstances. If I punch right them early Bar room, enough, surf, if surf I fighter. sucker punch them well enough. Yeah. God, you don't remember when we watched the UFC fights? Dudes were getting mm-hmm. kicked in the face mm-hmm. and looking like it was a gnat. Mm-hmm. You think you'd take that guy? No, I don't think I could take him. Oh, no, I think I could punch sucker him punch him right, without him knowing it's With- even coming. <laughs> and if I could do it in the right spot without him knowing, like, I, I could get away. Boom. And as long as I punched him and he didn't punch me and I got away, I won the fight. Right, I win and I beat uh. Anderson Silva that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how funny would that be? It's like, you, like somebody makes it like their 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 lifelong dream to beat Anderson Silva in a fight, and they find out like where he is, where and, he like, drinks. They, they yeah. find out where he beef. drinks. <laughs> and, no, 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 not even. Like you just like scooch up next, like up to him next to him. And you're just like, and then run. <laughs> oh, and you're like, won! Won the fight! I beat up Anderson Silva! And then, like 25 years later, you're talking to your grandchildren, still, and yeah, that's, how I, that's pretty much how I defeated Anderson Silva. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no way, yeah, it was... Uh, Beat his ass. He didn't even punch me back. He didn't even was, punch me back. It was one of those things that it just it just happened so fast, and I had to react. Like, yeah, right, motherfucker. You went to sucker punched him. 
<laughs> oh my god! But uh, I w- it was only in one big bar brawl, and it was really funny. It was um, it started off with, with a girl walked over to my friends to where me and my friends were sitting, and I knew it was gonna be trouble because she was re- very pretty, and she came from a table full of big dudes, oh, and she boy. sat next to us, and she goes. Can we talk about sex? And right away, I looked uh, at my friends, and I was like, this is going to be trouble. And I was just like, all right. I was like, I, I was like all right, let's humor her. And she's just talking. She, she, this girl was just like talking about all sorts of shit, you know? And my friends were just laughing, like eating it up. And then she sat down, got comfortable. She ordered herself a beer. And right away, I'm like, okay. I'm just sitting on her side next to her because I want to see that table. Like, I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not going to put my back to these guys. I'm like, this was like years ago. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. So at one point, we all just started bullshitting. Eventually, she left. We're leaving the bar. My friend went to go grab his coat, and one of the guys just boom shoulder checks him. My friend Anthony, Alex, oh, you know, Anthony's got a now he doesn't have a couple of screws loose, but Anthony's yes, the kind of guy he where does. he's like, just just don't touch me. He Short hates, fuse. He hates he, being touched. He's combat ready. So constantly. So the guy <laughs> slams him into the shoulder. Anthony just turns and just goes right for the guy's neck. It just just. Like murder choke, like yeah. <laughs> like I said, he's yeah. combat ready. <laughs> so it's like he goes for like the double handed, like I'm going to jail. I'm going to kill you. And I'm watching this with my friend Ryan. And I'm like, oh shit. So that throws you know the bar, you know, like everyone's like you know getting riled up. Ah. And the again, the biggest mistake happened. The bartender, I mean not the bartender, the bouncer. He he basically kicks everybody out at the same time. And my, my brother used to be a, a, a bouncer, and he's like, you know, you never do that because th- th- now the brawl happens outside. Yeah. So he gets rid of everybody outside, and everyone's like, you know, oh, trying to break it up, break it up, break it up. And out of nowhere, my friend Ryan's like, fuck this. He just comes over, haymaker over the top, and out of all of us, he's the one who just doesn't fight. And he just, like, he saw enough that night. Ah, <laughs> boom, clocks some dude, and it started. Everyone's brawling, everyone's brawling, everyone's shoving. The whole time, I'm like, all right, find the biggest guy. And talk his ass off the ledge. So he, they had this one big dude. And I'm just like, listen, you should need to grab your friends. I'm going to grab my friends. We're going to get the fuck out of here. Let's just stop this. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm kind of making sense to him, right? And as I'm talking. Sort of? And, yeah. <laughs> you know? And he's kind of like, kind of sees it. Like, oh. And so as I turn around, I see my friend Ryan again running around just like double macing people. Like, <laughs> uh, like making a fucking. <laughs> a whirling dervish. Just <laughs> making a mess out of this entire thing. And, and as I'm saying this, that's what he's looking at. Like, okay, I'm trying to, you know, talk this guy down. And my fucking friend is like just scumbag punching everybody. I'm like fuck. So when I turn back to look at this guy, he's got like his shirt coming off. I'm like, oh fuck, he's doing that. I'm gonna take my shirt off. Shit. I'm like, oh fuck. So I go to grab my friend and I feel a boom, a punch behind my head. And that's when I was like, all right, fuck this. Yeah, all rabbit bet- punch. All bets are off. I'm like, oh, I'm slugging this dude before everyone's slugging everybody. Bouncer comes out. Some other dudes come out. They stop the whole fight. And I'm like, all right, thank God. I'm, like, I'm gonna grab these two idiots. We gotta run because they had more people. And I don't know why we're there slugging it out. And everybody's catching their breath. You know, like, all right, I'm like, definitely the cops are coming. And there goes Ryan again. One more time. Yeah, over the top. Boom. Clacks, you know, he clocks another dude. And I'm like, shit. At, at this point, you know, I grab him. We're running down the block. Anthony's like, I'm never going out ever again. I swear to God, I'm going to kill somebody. And, you know, and eventually I was like, you know what? I need to learn some skills. And shortly, <laughs> and shortly after, Jim. and shortly after, I was like, you know, this was like, I think like easy, like six years ago. And I was like, I need to start brushing up on you know not just boxing like Thai boxing you know if the shit gets close you know if somebody ever gets that close to me I want to be able to elbow them in the face and just take them down have you found have you found since you started that I feel like some of you guys who who get into that like because I've wanted to get into that too since you started that have you found that you just don't even get yourself in that situation it just doesn't it doesn't even get to you it's kind of funny you're like oh now when it comes to me I'm gonna fuck somebody now now it's like yeah Yeah, I feel like that it's really funny how that works like you you actually learn you know because people put it down I trained for five years and I got into one fight (laughs) that's it and it was was, was, that's it one time people people put it down but I I always find that once once people even angry people you know once they actually get the discipline to actually learn the stuff they have absolutely like no interest isn't that what a martial artist is yeah you don't once you learn that shit one you're tired all the fucking time because you're training every day (laughs) you're getting punched in the face for fun so (laughs) by the time you get home and it's the weekend you're like why the fuck would I want to get hit by anybody I did it five days out of the week I want to relax Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't want to get hit anymore. So, and the one time I got into a fight during all this training was at the very beginning of the training where I thought I was a badass. Right. Yeah, I have one week of karate in my belt. I, I really know how to fucking fight. Yeah, that was it. After that, I was like, no, this is just whack. This is just whack. Right. I, oh. Well, no, like a very martial cool. artist is someone who can subdue an enemy, right? Like, yeah. the, the, and, and the best way to subdue an one. enemy 
first would be without a fight. It's pacifism. Right? It, it would be right. like avoiding a fight at all costs. Yeah. So, so a very, very, a real true martial artist is does not want to fight. Who, at, like, most efficiently and effectively can subdue someone. Yeah, even the whole if thing's it's through talking. It's right. a the part whole thing's of, not about fighting, it's uh, about discipline. It's a part of well, the art. It's, it's, it's about. It's like, oh, man. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like it's it's the art of like being the best at that, oh, okay. at like being at one on one, um, like conflict resolution. Yeah, uh, a part of the fight is nice. is the ability to not get in it. Right, that's right. a fight in itself, and you got to get really good at that if you're a real martial artist. Mm -hmm. Like you'll never see George St. Pierre get in a street fight ever. That shit will just not happen. <laughs> Never or Anderson Silva for the matter. Like almost never do you hear about UFC guys getting to a fight. The only time you ever hear about it is like Henzo Gracie like beat up four dudes who tried to mug jumped him. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he live tweeted it. Oh. He live tweeted the whole event. He was like, "Oh guys, these guys are following me." LOL on Twitter. Oh wait, they want to fight. Lol. And then fucking yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey guys, I just God. beat up four guys oh, in the end. So great. And then they all got arrested. That was the only time you ever really hear about real martial artists Dude. getting to a fight. Imagine. Imagine we're going to mug a fucking UFC fighter. We oh. have no idea. We have no idea until like the last second when you're like, all right, go for his wallet. And you turn around and you're like, Brock Lesnar. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. No, no. Like at this point, you can't pull back. It's like he's got my hand. You lost that shit, dude. It's fucking rat. shoulder's gone. Boom. Oh, oh speaking of GSP, I went to go see Captain America. How'd you like it? It was dope. I didn't see it yet. Like, How dude, is that? Speaking good. of GSP. He's, he's, in, the he's in the movie. Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 He's one of the when? bad guys. He's yeah. one of the bad guys. Yeah. He is? Yeah. He's like in the beginning, like when the dude, when Captain America jumps out the plane. Spoiler some, alert. Some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, bro. Earbuds. <laughs> he, oh, it's that guy? Like the yeah. first, the first yeah. save that he's doing. That was a cool fight. Is that is a cool fight. Yeah. That guy was bad. Hey, he's yeah. just, he, he did everything himself. Yeah, that was awesome. Flips and yeah. all. I was like, wow. I don't oh, know. You could do GSP, that. GSP, bro. Yeah. He's the man. Yeah, now that I think about it. I, Badass I, Canadian. I I didn't put two and two together. I just, I, I while I was watching it, I'm like, oh, here's another stunt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not like that movie? Uh, no, then, no. I, I mean, I thought it was like just uh, 50 50, you know? Okay. Like, right. I, I, I was no better or worse after. It was, it was no over. lock. There was no, it wasn't memorable. Um, I, I'm unchanged from that movie. It made no imprint on my gotcha. humanity. Gotcha. Did you say for the the after after credit stuff? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I left. He goes. I know what you're gonna do, Marvel. You're gonna be. You're gonna have me stay I here did. for two more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Well, like the whole movie, I kind of felt like I know what you're doing, Marvel. You've done this before. <laughs> before yeah. You've done this before. And the whole time, I was also high, and I was like, "Where the fuck?" Or all the other Avengers. I'm like, this is an easy fight. This is easy. Call the Hulk. Call Iron no, Man. No, yeah. he, no, he, this is very true though. Because the whole time like, I'm like, I'm like, this is bullshit. You're trying to tell me this whole thing again. Oh man, I don't want to blow it up. But this whole thing is going down, and you're trying to tell me that four months ago I had the greatest team ever, and now no one's around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the world's oh. about to end yeah. again. And what? You texted the other guys, and they're like, eh, you get this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like no, he's like Hulk up. no. Busy. The world's about Hulk to end. Weights. Everybody like comes like, together. Well, nobody fucking... nobody can get to Thor because he's in the other realm. Yeah, so he only comes back when he wants. He leaves like a voicemail. <laughs> Thor, Iron Man's busy can. running his company, so he, you know he doesn't just step Hulk's out. Dude, him on when a the world phone. ends, there's no company. Like, <laughs> yeah. would you, wouldn't you like be like, okay, world might be destroyed. Need to like put my calls on hold for yeah. a minute. Like, I feel like I, Tony dropped the I ball think, on that. Tony should have been there. Yeah. You, you, you have, a, like, you have a total point though because it, it was a pretty it's apocalyptic ridiculous. event. It's yeah. just kind of like Captain America's just gonna handle that. Yeah, well, like yeah. what? Everybody was just like, "Nah, you got it, Captain America." <laughs> right. Uh, no, if I was, Captain I think they make a reference yeah. in the movie. Well, I, I would be pissed they if did. I was Captain America. We For... had lunch next week. I'd be like, "Listen, guys, what, what the fuck happened? Like, seriously, like, no, like, what happened? Like, no, like, it's cool. I understand you guys have things to do, but what happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was." Like I was left me like, with fucking Falcon. Like I was let down. And, and, like my backup was a dude Widow. I met running, jogging. That was my backup. Okay, a guy who I met was a jogger. Like, <laughs> Spoiler what alert. Happened? Like what happened? And you know what? They better have some really good fucking excuses. Like, dude, I fell asleep. I was high. I was I don't know. I was writing a song, fucking something, man. Because I would be like, you know what? I'm out of this team. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I can be a part of this. Not this. Doing this. this is yeah, stressful. Bullshit, you know what guys? you forgot too is he is the captain of the team. Is he? So he doesn't have to he's call. The everyone. worst one. He's a shit. He's a. He's the worst fucking Avenger. He's the worst. He's the worst they made him the captain. He's not the worst one. Dude, totally. I mean, and don't. Didn't you watch the whole movie? Black Widow's like, kind of the worst. Well, you're like no, she's you got boobies. She's the. Oh my god. You can't. 
No. You know who the worst one is? Is uh, not the archer. Jeremy Renner. How dare you? The oh, archer. Dude. How dare you? Oh man. I mean, he's the eagle eye. Bro, he shoots did, arrows. He shoots fucking bows. That's how arrows. good he is. I'm so, saying arrows. That too. Dirt. Like, he's, a, he's great. He's great with arrows. a gun and bow and arrows. Man, so much practice we've done, dude. He shoots <laughs> arrows. Arrows. Yeah. That's his special ability. Yeah. Dude, that to can, me is not as. He's cool. Cameron Haynes. No. Yeah. Cameron Haynes does not scare me. Like when you have the Hulk. <laughs> when he when you have Hulk's Iron Man. And some dude shooting arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man fucking blasts laser beams out of his palms. So you agree that, that would take out like a tanker. One. But how good are this you to where that team wants arrow. the arrow guy? What's he doing special to where the team's like, all right, he can come join. He's I like, I don't him know, and Black man. Widow. He's doing something. But all right, all right. So, so, so that little, so that little scene where, where in the Avengers where they're all like back to back in that circle, you know, and the Hulk's like, well, I'm fucking pissed, you know. And <laughs> Iron Man's like, I'm turbocharged. Batteries are at 100. percent Captain America's like, I'm on steroids because basically that's exactly what he is. He's on the best steroids ever, you know. He can fall out of a building. He's cool. Um, like Thor's like, fuck it, I'm rock and roll. I'm, I'm a, a god. I'm a know? god. Yeah, and then, I can't die. And now. <laughs> I'm Hawkeye, and I'm looking at fucking Scarlett Joh- Johansson. I'm gonna, Hawkeye, I'm gonna, thank I'm you. gonna say, what the fuck are we doing here? Like you, you have, you have two guns, and I don't even have a gun. I got arrows that we need to leave. Like we seriously, you're fighting leave. in a spandex suit. What are I'm you gonna thinking? have to go get these when I shoot them. Like, yeah. this is, like <laughs> I need like, these again. Like, like, like retrieve <laughs> these arrows. Like this I don't have another quill. Like time <laughs> out. Yeah. I need to retrieve retrieve these. I'm like this isn't bad for us. This is really bad for us. <laughs> this, this is like worst case scenario. Scenario. There's a fucking portal and aliens I've never seen are attacking us. What do you want to do? I'm leaving it up to you, but I wouldn't leave though. I'm just, you know, call me a quitter. But uh, thank you yeah. for giving me that name. I kept calling him Eagle Eyed Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah, some of it you watch and you're like, this just does not make sense right now. But at that moment, I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I would, oh yeah. Then later on, you're like, oh man, that was. Pretty crazy. But I didn't even think about that afterwards because it was just like I'm going to, and that's just the mindset people are in. Like I'm going to go see Captain America. It's just taking place in the same place. Where the fuck are the other Avengers? <laughs> I'm actually mad now that you guys pointed. It out. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a little side screen with bubbles showing what they're all up to. <laughs> <laughs> Thor's like holding his hair like uh, <laughs> the Hulk is just. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk is like making fucking shit up. Like this is gonna save the world one day. What the fuck are you gonna save the world now? What are you doing, man? Yeah, seriously, unleash Hulk on one of those things. Fuck, that's it, dude. Hulk smash. <laughs> now, now I definitely want to see the next one, whichever it is. Man, five minutes. Awesome. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Rudy. Oh, guys, this was fun. At first, I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. I just took some brain pills and caffeine. Watch me just be like... Bruh, bruh, bruh. <laughs> oh, you were like that for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then we we turned it on. Good work, guys. We turned it about, about 20 minutes in. I think the hardest thing is people just need to realize it's a conversation. Yeah. The mics aren't real. That's the move invisible mics. All right. Are we going to call it now? Co-host? <laughs> okay. Rudy, thanks for coming on, man. Well, it's awesome. You should well, definitely come on again. I had a blast. I feel like I got more things accomplished for me to come back on. You know, like, oh, Rudy, what'd you do? I fucking solved something amazing. You know, and then come back and bullshit bore you guys with Make that. Make that song. Make that song. Oh, first. my God. We're real pots and pants, I for swear real. to you. Let's do it. I'm going to fucking record it. <laughs> And, and, and I'm gonna go for the hundred dollars, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. And if you guys give me a check, I'm like, no, I want the fucking coins. <laughs> Who's on the coin? Is it Susan B. Anthony? I don't know. It's her and no, it's it's her and uh Sacagawea. Joya. Joya, Joya, yeah. So yeah. make sure you, you, you Native American. you're specific about which ones you want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're fair. <laughs> give me the soccer ones. What? <laughs> give me that soccer, bitch. <laughs> give me the Joya. <laughs> thank thank you, Angelo. No problem. And thank you for our t- tens of listeners. We really appreciate Oh, yeah, we really appreciate it, guys. And, uh, yeah, peace in the Middle East, bitches. Later. <laughs>